Well, this continued meeting of the City Council to order. Uh, roll call, please. Council Agency Member Rouget. Hello. Here. Lingle. Here. Durham. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Vice Chair Martner. Present. Mayor Chair Siminski. Present. Before I go into oral communications, I want to uh, explain some of the procedures that we'll use tonight. And if they're confusing to you, then I've conveyed my understanding of them pretty well. Um, because they're, they're a little bit confusing to me. But we did have public hearings on a number of items, items at the last meeting, and we closed the public hearing. We will have oral communications. We have received, again, another stack of documents to consider with respect to those items we'll look at tonight. And uh, um, we, we can look at them, but they were made after the public hearing was closed. They won't be given the same formal treatment uh, as we would comments that were made during the, the public hearing, but the council can listen to them. And during oral communications, uh, if, if there's something you want to add to what you said last week, we'll, we'll listen to you. But we hope we can get through that rather quickly so we can get on to the five items that, uh, that are, are called for the, uh, on the agenda tonight. When we, ad when we uh, um, adjourned last week uh, to this meeting, to the continued meeting, we said that uh, we were going to be dealing with the five items tonight that were on the agenda last time. Those items uh, were the EIR and the four requests for expansion of the city, north, south, east, and west. Um, we didn't say and we didn't uh, agree to take the land use, uh, uh, the rest of the land use and the zoning items because we had heard, what, more than two, well more than 200 uh, postcards and letters from the public. Uh, uh, they were expressing concern about the possible rezoning of their property. Um, that will not be taken up tonight either. The requests are still being analyzed and the council hasn't been given the information we need to deal with that issue. But the, the, uh, the, the notices we received uh, were somewhat um, not complete uh, and in indicative that, uh, that the public didn't understand the issue before us. We will take up, before we take up the zoning, we will take up the elements of land use, and if we paint a map in the land use approval, and it, we, we paint this block blue and this block orange, we will then go back later and amend the zoning ordinance to, ref to, to, to show what those colors are. Uh, the, com the, the, uh, the letters that we received from individuals saying, don't rezone my house, uh, should have said, in the land use, don't consider new, new uh, or lower or higher density or whatever for my house, because once we approve the land use, it's almost automatic that we move to the zoning. If we approve a particular block to go to, uh, to, go to uh, a, 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 a higher density, for instance, then um, after we make that approval, the next step is to go to the zoning ordinance and just change the, the designation for that block to match what we approved. So we should be considering each of those um, each of those requests for consideration under the land use element uh, rather, rather than under the zoning element, even though the correspondence we received, the form letters that were distributed to everybody uh, to, to protest the action uh, said we protest the rezoning. I, and I'm, I'm going to ask both the attorney and, and, and the staff to interrupt me if I say something that's incorrect. But tonight, uh, we, I don't expect to get to that part of the land use uh, element that deals with uh, the, the uh, uh, densities, uh, uh, the kinds of structures that will be uh, put on various pieces of property within the city. Uh, that will be a part of uh, a hearing at, I hope, the next council meeting. Uh, we tonight intend to deal with uh, the, the, the five issues that we were discussing last meeting and then bring them... Uh, um, bring them, uh, 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 I hope, to close to an end tonight. 
I say close to an end because this afternoon I had a request from staff not to finally approve the EIR or finally determine that the EIR is adequate because as we go into circulation, as we go into uh, uh, traffic, as we go into uh, um, other features, there might be some things that we deal with that might, uh, might uh, uh, be affected by the EIR and might require something to be looked at. So it will be easier if we have to, to go look at the IR again in the future if it hasn't been finally approved tonight. So I likened it to driving a nail into it, saying we agree tonight, but that nail is not sent all the way in. It's sticking out a half an inch so that we can grab it and pull it out if we have to in the future. It won't be, um, it, it, I, I don't think it's likely that, uh, that we'll have to reopen it, but it'll be easier to reopen it if that nail is driven all the way in. Uh, tonight, I'll ask the council to deliberate, determine whether or not the IR is adequate in, in dealing with the issues in, in, in its procedures, in allowing the, the, the input and in describing the impacts of the items that we will be dealing with, but we won't make it a final vote tonight. We will then go to each of the four, uh, we will go to each, it, if, if we find it's adequate for us to move on, we will then go to each of the four expansion areas, discuss those one at a time. The only opportunity for the public to speak is going to be right now at the oral communications period because the public hearings on these four items uh, is, is closed and, we, and we've uh, supposedly heard uh, the, uh, everything to be said on those items. But uh, if, you, if you feel there's more to be said when we go into oral communications, you may, may speak on those items. I do want to introduce a new face up here and it's not mine. Underneath there, it's the same old face. Uh, but uh, um, Jeff Malavi is sitting in as our city attorney tonight. Um, we, as you know, uh, uh, did, not, uh, did not hire uh, full-time attorneys on our city staff. We contracted instead with a uh, very reputable, good uh, firm in Los Angeles. And uh, Joe Pannoni is usually set up here to... Uh, um, to be our attorney. Uh, he's not available. Uh, June, uh, the, that was with us last, mo last week, is, is not available tonight, so another representative of the firm is with us tonight. But I talked to him this afternoon, and he's been briefed. Uh, I think that uh, Joe, who's on vacation, probably spent a lot of time on the phone uh, briefing him, so he's ready to, to, uh, to serve us tonight. Uh, with that, unless, and, and Cecilia, you have a, a question or a comment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have a question regarding the EIR um, and what is it that we're supposed to do here, and I would like the staff to address it. And the question is the following. Did the Planning Commission approve the EIR, or did they recommend to take it to the Council? So I want to understand, because the agenda item talks about taking the recommendation of the Planning Commission. So are we changing how we read the agenda item, and what is the recommendation? Can we go through oral communication and then, uh, then open up that item? If, if, you, if you wish. Okay. I, I had just kind of meant, to, meant this as, as housekeeping, and we'll clarify it further when we take up the item. Okay. Let staff have a little bit of time. To... Okay, oral communications. Uh, you can speak on any item on consent calendar, except that we don't have a consent calendar tonight. Um, you can speak on any item of business of the, of the, of the city. Uh, five minutes, if you'll turn in a speaker card and watch the light. Hi, my name is Tom Davidson. I live at 7320 Santos Road in Lompoc. I'm a developer and a commercial real estate broker. My firm represents the current owners of the former Grefco site in the sale of that property. I represent a potential buyer. We'll probably put the property in escrow tomorrow. Um, my last development here in town, I developed the Sea Smoke Winery at 1601 North O Street this last year. Um, and this particular buyer owns a vineyard in the Santa Rita Hills. He owns a winery here in town. He's just recently opened up a tasting room at the Saboni Business Park. His plan would be to perform the necessary improvements to the existing buildings to make them viable as a wine storage and limited production facility. That would include improving the electric in there, uh, applying uh, cooler uh, equipment so that it can be temperature controlled, 
um, needs an operating restroom in the facility, and he'd like to see a fence along Highway 246, clean up the property, get rid of the trash, maybe lease it to a farmer so we could plant marigolds, at least make it look like a halfway reasonable site. Um, so why am I here? Um, the existing development plan that got approved is not economically viable. There's not going to be a boutique hotel built on that site, at least not in my lifetime. Um, and for his plan to succeed, it would mean getting these buildings stabilized so that they can produce some income, and then as the economy changes and improves, develop the balance of the site. So what does that require from the city? It requires some cooperation that would, one, allow a phased development of the site. I don't think anybody's gonna come in and build this entire site in one fell swoop. Two, that he'd be allowed to make these improvements to these buildings and allow them to be rented. They've been vacant for I don't know how many years in their current state, and that he'd be allowed to make these improvements without having to do all the uh, on and off site improvements up and down 12th Street and along Highway 246. If he's burdened with those expenses, it's not gonna make the project feasible, and he'll just walk from the deal. It's not that he's trying to get out of things. He would ask that those improvements in the future as the future developments are made, that those improvements be made at that time. We're not asking for money. We're just asking for cooperation that would allow him to get this property um, in a position where it actually would be economically viable. And what we're trying to do is retain some of the wineries in town, provide the right kind of storage. Recently, Kathy Joseph has moved her wine to San Luis Obispo because there is not any temperature controlled winery here or wine storage here. Other wineries have moved their stuff to Terravant. By the way, I built that a few years ago as well. So um, I would just ask that you consider um, instead of operating the way this has been done in the past, that uh, someone be allowed to come in here. And, and this guy, by the way, is a seasoned guy with the money, has done a number of developments around. And uh, if you want to see something happen on this site, I think this is the way it's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Mr. Mayor, if, you're, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask Mr. Davidson a quick question. Mr. Davidson, you're, you've indicated that the approved plan for this project will not be going forward. Is that your understanding? Well, the, 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 the current owners are not going to do that. They're selling the property. Okay. And, and, I, and I can tell you th that if, if you look at it e economically, it makes no sense. I mean, it just doesn't make <coughs> nobody, I don't care if it's this owner or any owner, can't make that plan make any sense. I guess my question is then, are you or the potential new owner, would you be able to come before the council and make a presentation? Absolutely. As to what your plans can are? And show you in detail exactly what we would want to do there. Okay, thank you. I, Go ahead. Okay, Bob, let, let's talk about that uh, offline. Sure. I think the process is go through the planning, planning department and planning commission first. I, I don't think well, Here's part of the problem. M time. My buyer is on a very short escrow. He, he wants to get this done. His deal is that he would close this in 45 days. And if we have to go through the normal process of going through the planning department and have them tell us 60 days down the road, here's what you can do or can't do, or we spent a year and a half doing an EIR, he, he's, he'll just walk. And I if we're going to do this, this needs to get done now. The wineries are going into their harvest season, and come the end of the year, they're going to have to move wine somewhere, and we'd like it to be in this facility. Okay, thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm Warren Culberson, Jr., and um, following what Mr. Davidson just said, we need creativity right now in this city to get the city back alive. Now, I'm here once again tonight to ask you not to downzone existing buildings in the city of Lompoc. My father drafted a detailed letter explaining why it is detrimental to downzone 415 West Laurel, and he sent a copy to all of you, so I won't go into detail about that tonight. When you downgrade zoning, you instantly change legitimate buildings into non-conforming uses. That kind of zoning creates uncertainty, and uncertainty creates vacancies. It would be next to impossible to sell or lease a warehouse that is zoned R3. There are many uses that are not even permissible with an R3 zone in a conditional use permit, such as a warehouse or a contractor's office. You cannot turn a warehouse into an apartment simply by changing its zoning, and therefore, it remains vacant. 
We've been told that you cannot spot zone a piece of property in the city, however, in the city of Lompoc. However, the subject property has been functioning under a spot zoning for more than 40 years. It's been spot zoned longer than it's been legitimately zoned. So spot zoning is a problem. Within, next, within the next four to eight years, many of the existing buildings in the city of Lompoc will be occupied by businesses that don't even exist today. Current CO zoning will be less in demand because many businesses will not require office space as we know it today because of technology. For this reason, zoning should be as all-encompassing as possible. Commercial buildings should be able to have mixed use capability. We have a six unit apartment building at 221 South F Street, which the city wants to zone to R1. The only conceivable reason I can see for making existing apartments, apartments into non-conforming use is to create unnecessary work for an overstaffed planning department by requiring conditional use permits. Now, as council member Cecilia Martner said in a flyer we received the other day, quote, we need to identify and remove city barriers that have driven investors and businesses out of the city. Downzoning is a perfect example of one of those barriers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Culbertson. Much broader, citizen Lompoc. <coughs> Uh, this is in regard to the general plan update. Um, I would, uh, as as was stated earlier, the uh, the oral communications or uh, <clears throat> public hearing portion has been closed. What I would like to suggest is that the council. Uh, vote to either reopen the public hearing or to accept any communications that have been received since the, the public hearing was closed as part of the public hearing so that those communications will be considered in the, uh, uh, as, as legal communications uh, with regard to the uh, the subject at hand, if we don't, if those uh, communications are not allowed, they can't be used in the uh, in any uh, appeal, if there is such an appeal. And I, I think the right thing to do would would have been to leave the public hearing open, but the be next best thing now is to. Uh, either reopen the public hearing or include any communications um, associated with the general plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Browder. If there are ad additional speakers, I wish you'd please line up uh, and uh, be prepared to, to speak as soon as the speaker is through so that we don't uh, spend the whole night again with public hearing and then have to defer any deliberation from up here to another meeting. Okay, my name is Art Hibbets. I reside at 1251 East Highway 246. I wasn't here at your last meeting. I listened to your explanation tonight about what you're doing or plan to do. And um, my understanding after talking to the assistant city clerk was that the public meeting hearing is going to be open on items 1b and 1c and she was nice enough to mark my agenda and show that that was the case and i'm wondering uh did the did the council as a whole vote to close the public hearing at the last meeting i have i uh, don't have your minutes available did the council we, or did we called we we called a public hearing we publicly noticed it we asked if there was anyone else that wanted to speak that night there was no one else to speak that night um mr hibbett the next step is to close the the the, the hearing 
with all due respect, Mr. Mayor, uh, I would ask that you reopen the public hearing, as the gentleman just said. There's a lot of good reasons for that, but one is that a lot of people went home because the meeting went so late and they left with the understanding that there would be a continued hearing. And I'm under wondering why you don't want public input. It seems like you're working hard to avoid public input, and that's an insult. So I would, I guess I would ask of all the council members, would you please reopen the public hearing? And if you don't, then I'd like to have an opportunity to talk during this time, but I'm not ready to do that. So it would be much more efficient. You're going to hear from people one way or another. So please consider that request. Thank you, Mr. Hibbett. Is there anyone else who wants to speak? Yes, I would like to speak. Uh, my name is Bob Campbell, and I, <clears throat> I reside at 2350 East Highway 246, and I would like to speak. Uh, about the proposed um, general plan amendment and uh, the, the, as in regards to ag land. But first I'd like to uh, wish the gentleman back here, Mr. Davis, and I think uh, good luck because uh, I recently uh, took a run at that Grefco property to put a produce cooler in there and I ran against the same uh, obstacles. Um, you know, it just, it, it, it's cheaper and more cost effective for me to start from scratch on a bare piece of land than it was to go jump through the hoops that would be required by the city to uh, put that in operation. <coughs> Excuse me. On to the agenda item tonight. <coughs> um, I find some inconsistencies in your approach to, you know, the east side versus the west side ag lands. Um, I've heard many people talk about, as an, on, the, on the west side as an example, you know, while you're making a nice straight line, that's good planning and uh, they would put a 200-foot buffer zone in down there, which would eliminate the uh, conflict between urban and ag, and we all know what those can be. But then when I go to the east side, which is where I'm most concerned about, because that's where I live and farm and own property, and I see anything but a straight line in terms of the line that the city has drawn to annex out there. And we have a perfectly natural buffer zone the Santa Inez River that costs no one a dime, and we're willing to jump across that. And once you do that, the pressure will be on. The pressure will be on from private landowners who want to develop their property, whether it be commercial, whether it be residential, whatever. And you're going to open up a Pandora's box here that you'll never get shut. And I think it's a huge mistake. And for what little bit of tax money you have to pay the county, because it, it, it currently does uh, exist in the county. It's a more than fair trade, in my opinion. You're going to hear from people who tell you, well, this, the soils are sandy and, the, you know, it's not, it's not prime soil. Well, I'm here to tell you that I farm it. I have farmed it for many, many years, as others have in that area, right across the fence from River Park. And there's cut flowers, there's asparagus, there's broccoli, there's lettuce, there's cauliflower, and the list goes on. That land will meet the criteria for the Williamson Act, the Ag Preserve, any day of the week. So if anyone tells you other than that, they're either trying to mislead you or they don't know the facts. So I would urge you to, to reconsider jumping across that river, across that perfect natural boundary between urban and ag because the conflicts will begin once you do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Uh, my name is Richard Quant, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm speaking um, on behalf of the Grower Shipper Association of Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo Counties. Uh, I spoke uh, twice uh, last week, and I thank um, you for allowing us to speak um, this evening, either on or off the record. Um, our association became um, involved or alarmed at this proposal because um, we do monitor growth and development decisions in a lot of other jurisdictions along the Central Coast, and I can tell you we have not seen any other jurisdiction trying to bite off 270 acres of, of this quality and this value land at this particular time. Even a similar um, city like the city of Santa Maria is not even talking about, you know, annexing or expanding either to the agriculture areas on the, we on the east or on the west. And that's primarily because that city has a Greenbelt Agreement, um, both to the east and the west, 
where no urban development is allowed to protect those um, agricultural soils. And that forces that city to look um, to the south or look towards infill development. Um, I, I, I looked at, um, I did a little research today in terms of the building permits that were issued by the city of Lompoc so far this year. Um, I did not find a single building permit for a new single family dwelling that's been issued so far this year. I found one commercial permit for the Panda Express that's about 3,000 3, square feet. And so due to the, um, I think, depressed economic conditions, um, it, it's, I don't see that there's necessarily this overwhelming reason to make a statement of overriding considerations and improve an expansion of this magnitude at this time. And um, I, um, I think your planning commission, after extensive hearings, recognized that fact and saw that fact and is urging you to, um, and made a recommendation to, to revisit this issue at some point in time um, when there are growth um, needs for the community. But your community does not need to expand um, on 270 acres of prime farmland at this time for these reasons. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor Siminski and uh, fellow council members. Um, <clears throat> my name is Christina McGinnis. I'm with the Environmental Defense Center Open Project, the Open Space Preservation and Education Network. And I just wanted to follow on to some of my previous comments related to um, both Bailey Avenue and a couple other issues related to buffer policies. And I started to talk last week about some of the policies that are proposed in the land use element as part of the general plan update that's being considered right now. And I just wanted to point out that it's, it's legally required that the general plan be internally consistent um, with other elements in the gen in the in the, that, are, that follow on from the general plan. And I, I did read one of the policies that's being proposed in the land use element right now, but I wanted to just point out some of the other policies um, that would basically uh, not be consistent if some of these expansion areas are approved. And that is um, policy 1.4, the city shall encourage Santa Barbara County and the local agency formation coalition to plan urbanization within municipalities in order to protect prime ag land outside the urban limit line, <coughs> excuse me, and to efficiently utilize public infrastructure. 1.7 says the city shall encourage infill development to meet city residential and commercial growth needs. This is a big one because as we know, the general plan has identified that there is existing infill opportunity available within the city limits currently for the whole life of the general plan and that uh, this expansion of Bailey Avenue and the other expansion areas is not necessary to meet those numbers. Policy 5.2, the city shall protect prime agricultural lands east of the city and west of Bailey Avenue. 5.3 says to help preserve ag on a regional basis, the city shall encourage Santa Barbara County to protect the most productive agricultural soils. And uh, you know, as in the case of Bailey Avenue, we know we have prime agricultural soils, 270 acres. If the city is going to encourage Santa Barbara County to protect their prime ag land, then this is the place to start with Bailey Avenue and not approving that expansion. And finally, uh, policy 7.5, which says the city should protect and enhance the agricultural industry as well as other specialty crops that are unique to the region. And I believe that uh, Bailey Avenue is a, is a great example of that. I also wanted to point out that um, the project EIR did point out that uh, there would be class one significant and unavoidable impacts to uh, agriculture and land use. And those impacts, some of those impacts can be avoided by um, adopting alternative one, which would be um, not moving the urban limit line, keeping the urban limit line and, and not approving the Bailey Avenue expansion. So I uh, would just like to again ask your city council to provide the leadership and vision in not um, approving the expansion area and to uphold the planning commission decision. And finally, I just wanted to echo on to the previous speaker, and that is um, I've done a lot of work as a land use planner on buffer policies recently within Santa Barbara County. In fact, um, I'm a member of the Agricultural Futures Alliance, which is the first time that agriculturalists and environmentalists have gotten together to look at the future of ag. And, and the first thing that we did as a group was to create a buffer policy. So we 
extensively reviewed the utility of buffers. Um, it's great that buffers are being proposed, but you have to consider what's adjacent to the limit of where this development would go. So in other words, if you had a buffer that would buffer the existing residences, you're going to create more conflicts on the outer portion of that. So, and then related to the, the natural buffer of the San Inez River, I would echo that, that that's absolutely one of the best ways to buffer is to have the natural barriers. So I would support that very much. Um, so please create a long-term vision for your community. Thank you. My name is Terry Hammonds. I'm a resident of Lompoc. Um, I'm going to um, try to follow your direction in not addressing these uh, expansion issues. But I think there is something that we need to consider, and that is the, s the condition of our city. If anybody has been to our old town or downtown area, uh, you can see that we're, we're not doing well. And this has been deteriorating for years and years and years. The items you have before you tonight, I think will take away from that uh, emphasis. I think that we need to look at what we have within the city to deal with the problems um, that are occurring. The expansion, um, whether good or bad, whether economically uh, profitable or not profitable to the city, um, it, I, I think it, uh, it's a distraction. I, uh, I went over the housing elements and um, the demographics do not fare well for expansion. Uh, if anybody looks at those, um, we do not have a, th a, um, a thriving economy in our city. We don't have businesses. And I know that um, uh, these, th actually, I think that that's the emphasis that this should be taken, is attracting businesses to this city rather than expanding for housing. Businesses are way our way to bring people in that will spend their money, build businesses, and as far as I'm concerned, um, this shop, Lompoc, is not going to buy a lot of um, uh, room anymore because it's not happening out there. We have a Halloween store that's in the Mervins. It's going to be a temporary business. It's going to be gone. It's going to take money away. This, I, it's probably not even operated from uh, some, any, any business that's in the city. So. I appreciate all the uh, the time that's been done on this um, uh, general plan and the expansion and everything, but I really think that we need to get back to the roots of what we uh, need to deal with, and that is our city and on our economy. It's a tough um, decision for you, but um, that's what you're up there for. Thank you, Mr. Hammonds. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Carol Nash. Uh, as I've said, I've lived here a long time and watched the booms and busts in this area. But I think what's, what maybe we're all missing is that Lompoc has something to offer, to offer that the rest of the communities around us, which we're trying to be like, uh, don't have. And that's we, we are in a rural area that's surrounded by wonderful agriculture and rural, and rural design that most people would give give anything with, to be able to live here, but they have to be able to survive here with jobs, as this young man just said a few minutes ago. So it seems to me that we would, when I sat through all of the scoping hearings and when I came to some of the planning commission hearings toward the end, that they understood that. The planning commission really did understand that we have to revitalize downtown. They talked about mixed uses, they talked about infill, and I think it was very interesting that someone said there's only been one, one permit for any kind of a, a housing to be built. So 
I hope that you'll really look at all of this because the vacancy issues too, I think should be a big, big factor. We have big, as I came in here the other night, two big baskets, not even the beginning of how many, many people have gone bankrupt or had, uh, had to give up their homes. So I think really let's consider getting this downtown active again. It used to be that way. It used to be exciting to come downtown. We drove through the flower fields to come downtown. It was the capital, flower capital of the world. And you know, when I first came here, I thought, gee, I don't know if I wanna live here. You know, it's dusty, it's this and it's that. And I came from an area that was much more urban. But when I got here and I felt it, and I understood what it was all about, it's something I really longed to be in, not into this big, great, big urban, situation where other communities around us might be really w wanting to, to be like. Um, and I'm talking about, we don't want to be able to see how fast we can get out of town to go to, to uh, Santa Maria or, uh, or Buellton or Santa Barbara. We want to be able to be a community in ourselves, and that's what we used to be. We used to be able to come downtown and and buy anything we wanted for kids, for grandma, for, for the working family, anybody could buy what they wanted at Moore's or at Penny's or whatever. All those stores are gone because there's been nothing to retain the people here who really want to stay here. Uh, you mentioned about, um, uh, oh, I can mention too that, that uh, we were described in the history books, maybe I'm thinking of uh, Walker Tompkins, who wrote about California history. <laughs> he used to be on the radio with these little vignettes who used to talk about all the things that our murals are trying to tell us about now. And it was wonderful. And, you know, you had a sense of community about this guy. He called this California's wonderful corner. It doesn't exist somewhere else. So build on your values is, I guess, what I'm saying. And about circulation. If all these things, these, if all of these annexations or expansions with hope or annexation, and some, some people might hope for it, certainly not I. Um, I think that um, uh, you better look at circulation because I don't think that it's adequate. Where I live, I can't imagine what would happen up at the Y. I can't imagine, for instance, if you acquired another piece of property in the Y, who's gonna be responsible for what's now a county road uh, if it becomes, if you're buffering it on either side with city property. So. Uh, and I think that's true all the way around. You better be concerned. I know that Mayor DeWeese was concerned about that. And I think that, that uh, I really appreciated that he looked into that and I thanked him. So thank you. Ms. Nash. Hi, uh, hello everybody, council people. Uh, David Schwartzman, I'm one of the applicants for the uh, Bailey Avenue annexation. And I was here last week and I heard everybody talk about how deathly the housing market is and we all know it's bad, but we did, I went on Zillow, which is a website that anybody can pull up, and I pulled up uh, homes sold in Lompoc in the last 12 months. And in the last 12 months, there have been 321 homes sold in town that have closed escrow. 31 were under $100,000, which would be considered blighted as people were describing. 145 between 100 and $200,000, 115 between two and $300,000, and 30 over $300,000. I'm hearing people come in and talk tonight about their property rights. Well, you know, we have property rights on the people in the Bailey Avenue expansion plan. We bought this property to put in North Avenue with the expansion idea that eventually our property would be able to be developed. It is general planned. Granted, at low density, but it is general planned. Mr. Bodger, Mr. Judge Huseman, they've all had the same property. They had sewer put in, various things. But uh, there's a lot of good themes that people here are talking about today about urban infill. I do a lot of urban infill in Los Angeles. This town isn't set up for urban infill. I'm, I'm, if you're going to do for sale product, it's not going to financially pencil an urban infill. That's an attached product. There's no financing out there for right now. The only bodies that are financing urban infill production projects are HUD, FHA. That can never be a for sale project. That is always going to be rental. That'll be a certain percentage of low income. To attract people to town, you have to uh, offer all kinds of housing stock, not just urban infill, which is only going to be one kind of stock. Something else interesting, people talk about the market. We built the Seabreeze Apartments out next to the Seabreeze Project near Briar Creek. And um, we have 64 apartments out there. Our average rents are about $1,300 a month for 850 square foot apartments. We're full all through the third phase. We've released them up in seven months and we're getting ready to release our next phase in the next few weeks. So when I 
translate that into a home price, $1,350 a month with interest rates being very low. Somebody who's renting an apartment there could buy a house for over $300,000. That's what their payment would effectuate into. And with FHA financing right now, an FHA loan, been, or if you're in the military, an ex-veteran, you can buy a house either with $1 down or with FHA with 3% down. So people talk about, listen, there's all kinds of housing stock needed, but to attract these employers, you have to offer all kinds of housing. So a few other little facts. I keep hearing about all this valuable ag land, and we sent in a package from the USDA, which talked about uh, how the loss of ag land um, from to urban sprawl is actually very minimal. This is from the USDA, a study that was done um, in the past year. Also in the package we sent you, there was an article on April 15th in the Lompoc Record about the water board having conflicts with agriculture being next to residential and the toxic, toxic, blah, blah, tox, <laughs> to, toxicities, toxicities, <laughs> sorry. Um, and that caused from the runoff of that. So there's a lot of factors to consider on both sides of this and you know we've heard people that are very emotional on one side and you have stakeholders that are emotional the other way. But um, I think there's been a lot of misinterpretation of facts and I think we've tried to answer concerns to police and fire and various issues and we've addressed that and hopefully you'll take that under consideration. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Schwartzman. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, Joyce Howerton, Lompoc. I don't know how we survived without these developers. <laughs> I mean, they've got this all worked out for us and they know what's best for us and they've got the facts and they're gonna take care of us. And I just wanna say, wow, I am so impressed at uh, the numbers they've come up with. I wonder how many of those houses were foreclosures. You know, I know I can, I'll use an example, my house. We got offered $700,000 for our house about four years ago. I don't think we could give it away today. I mean, you know, the market is down around 200,000 for a house like mine. I mean, let's get real. You can pull up your statistics all you want, but the reality is all you have to do, spend a little time in Lompoc and drive around in this community and you'll see house after house after house that's for sale or for rent or is just empty. And that's the reality of our community. We're talking about, <coughs> excuse me, building all these extra houses when we can't even fill the ones we have. I don't think you have a tough decision. I think you have an easy decision. You look at this community, you look at what you want this community to be in five and 10 years, the quality of life, and it's not that hard. We don't want this community changing. Every hearing you've held, from the workshops to the public hearings, the majority of every single person that has gotten up, and we're talking, you know, dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of people, and they've all said the same thing. Keep Lompoc the way it is, and by that I mean don't expand out, don't go out into the farmlands, don't use up prime agriculture, don't go to the east. You know, that's a really interesting issue, the farmland to the east. Um, just recently, a candidate for mayor um, talked about how FEMA had changed their rules and now it's okay that you should go out and, you know, build these uh, soccer fields and do everything because FEMA says it's okay. Well, in fact, that's just not true. FEMA did change some of the rules, but they're for down in the area where the water treatment plan is. If you look at the area, <laughs> that we're talking about around River Park is very limited use there. One of the uses is farming, agriculture. And I say to you, I think that's the best use. Um, tonight, somebody was saying, they were talking about vegetables that um, are healthy for you. That, that make you, you know, you have a, you're a healthier body, there's less chance of getting cancer. And it was interesting because every one of those vegetables that they were talking about is grown right here. So we pave over that because, hey, we've got these big high price houses and we're gonna bring people in somewhere. We're gonna find these people to come into Lompoc to buy these houses. So all of our farmlands paved over. Think about your life. Think about your quality of life when you don't have the food you want to eat. You know, 
some of you are here, some of you may be here next year, but I can guarantee you in 10 years, we're gonna have different people in here. And we're gonna have people that are gonna look at the decisions that were made today, and they're going to judge the people that are sitting here now on the kinds of decisions that were made. So I would say to you, please, please make the decisions for the best of the people in this community. Do not annex other property. Take care of what we have because we've got a big job on our hands. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Albert. William Schuyler, I live here in Lompoc. Some things I'd like you to, to remember. Everybody t today that came in that w doesn't want to expand out has land other places. Our last meeting, two of the landowners, the ones that actually bought the property or inherited the property, paid the taxes over the year, have run the operations on there, asked you to, to please include their land in the city. That's their request. That's their property rights, and I encourage you to do that. In 1958, it was announced that they're going to make the Cook Air Force Base. And again, there wasn't hardly a house available. People moved, lived clear out of town, up in the Pomo areas, and drove back and forth until they gave it. The house that I brought and raised my kids in, a lieutenant colonel bought it because he knew it was going to be two years before he could get on the base out there. But he needed a place for him and his family right now. So Mr. Burke came in with Westmore Homes and built quite a number of homes. When Cellite wanted to go to three shifts, there wasn't home, housing enough in Lompoc to do it. So what did they do? They built three housing tracks in Lompoc, on North F Street, North C Street, North D Street. So I'm asking you not to box yourself in. This is a plan for the future. Again, the property owners, there's uh, about four of them out there. I think three, three of the four have come and asked you to include the, the Bailey Pacific plan in our plan, and I, I think that's, that's very, very important. And we have to plan for the, it doesn't say we have to build on it, just has to say we have to have capacity. So uh, I know our former mayor talked about building up on the south side of town there. Well, that property is in the county right now, and the county could let a track go up there and put whatever they wanted on that hillside. So I, uh, going on up the canyon, I'm kind of against that. I believe the river is a natural boundary, yes. And when the armistice was gonna come on the Korean War, they, how long did they discuss a boundary? And how did they define the boundary? I believe they said, let's make it the 49th parallel, it's a straight line, thank you. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, my name is Leanne French and I'm with Citizens Planning Association, a Santa Barbara County-wide planning organization. And uh, there's been a lot of talk tonight about lines and lines are really important. Lines um, help us all understand what those expectations are, what the rules are. Lines are used in land use planning but also in um, law enforcement, uh, sports, they really are the boundaries that help us understand what those expectations are. So as you think about the lines being drawn within Lompoc, I just ask you not only to think about the obvious, but also some of those unexpected, unforeseen consequences that could happen in the future. So it, I think it is a significant decision for you to make going forward. Um, and uh, I hope that you'll take those into consideration. I also hope that you're, and I know you are, listening to us, and there's a lot of us, I think over 90% of the testimony that I've heard over the last couple of weeks has been with great concern about the annexations, and I know elections are coming up, so that's gotta be weighing on your minds as well. Lastly, I'd just like to um, mention that the um, annexations do seem to be in conflict with a lot of the other general plan uh, goals um, stated about the downtown. You've got some um, key opportunities, I believe, and some challenges with the downtown, and the more you think about development out on the fringes, the more it pulls people away from the center. And, you know, I, I do think that there's an opportunity for Lompoc to be revitalized as a, as a community which would help draw people for future development and future expansion, but not now. Let's focus on that downtown. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council. Uh, my name's Ray Ochoa, 
Uh, I don't want to be rude. I'm not sure. I, w I was here last week, my wife and I, to speak on the uh, down zoning, and I'm confused. If, if, can I say something now? You, you certainly you can sp say something now. We will not be considering that tonight. The, the, so what I have to say now, I'd have to come back uh, in, next week it, to, we to be considered? We will understand it a lot better and apply it a lot better if you say it next week. Or if you, uh, and, and, and we have seen... Uh, um, um, a number of written, <laughs> a large number of written comments that uh, that we have that are being analyzed, so that the staff can give us full information to Just consider to that property. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, so I, uh, um, if I'm not, I mean, if it's not going to be I, considered now, I, if, you know, I can come next week, but I, I'd rather, you know. I, uh, I'm not going to stop you from talking to us now, but I think that. Uh, uh, for myself, anyway, um, I'm I'm more interested in listening to the the comments that will apply to the the items that uh, that we're going to be dealing with tonight. Okay. Uh, and I will be because uh, um, I'll be looking to staff and I'll be looking for information at the time we deliberate this. We will open it up for public comments. Is there something, yes, sir? Yeah, I think I, uh, if I could just summarize. Um, your comments might have a little bit more effect if you say them to the council right before they're going to consider that item. Okay. But you certainly have every right to say anything you would like in the oral communication period tonight, right now, and at the next public hearing on the zoning amendments. Uh, I'm pretty much going to say the same thing. I may as well wait then. Uh, will it be next week? Will, do you know? Would, would, would we know? Uh, um, I mean, I know we, my wife and I normally don't come to the meetings. You'll, you'll know. But it may, you know, if, for instance, we continue taking public testimony tonight until um, unt until it's too late for us to deliberate, and we defer this till next week to to pick it up, and then if we have to open it up for public comment and next week, and all the same people stand up and speak, we may defer the decision to the following week. So I can't promise you that we will get through this and to the next. You know, that'll be decided later on tonight when we when we adjourn this meeting. Okay. Well, I'm going to say what I have to say now. Then. If that's okay. Okay. Uh, my, my wife and I uh, managed my mother's property over at uh, 401 South G. And she's, uh, she bought this property. My, my father and her brought this, bought this property uh, about around 40 years ago uh, with the intention of you know, helping uh, the, her 10 siblings. Uh, my, my, my father has passed away. My mother's still living. Um, my wife and I are, he are here on her behalf, and we we just recently last week heard about this this down zoning, and I explained it to her, and she wanted to come, but she doesn't speak English, and she's frail. And uh, we, my my mother, both mother and father, worked very hard. My dad worked almost all his life here in Lompoc. Uh, putting 14 hours a day for this pro uh, to get where they're at uh, now and uh, for for you to consider this this uh, down zoning would would be very hurtful for her and and she'd be losing a lot of money and uh, on behalf of my other seven brothers and three sisters we we oppose this uh, down down zone down zoning proposal thank you very much for your time Thank you, Mr. Ochoa. Good evening. My name's Juanita Sevilla. I'm a homeowner on South F Street, and I'm here to represent myself and my son, Jim Purcell, who you've heard speak before. He couldn't be here tonight because of work. He is a homeowner on Z Street and has an interest in my home also, um, when we talk about all of this land use and everything else, I can't help but thinking that it's, we don't, I don't hear very much about the people use and the fact that our downtown is uh, getting so closed up with the shops. I'm a walker and I walk all over town so I see how many houses are for sale and how many shops are closed so I know there are fewer and fewer jobs for the people here, 
and those are the things that I think should be considered when we're considering what's best, best for Lompoc now and for 20 years. Uh, the California Department of Finance estimates household growth of less than 700 through 2020 for Lompoc, and yet we're talking about releasing land that could be developed for a multitude of housing at the same town downsizing in areas like the sound, south side in our zoning so that people could live there and walk to where they want to go. I've been walking two or three miles to the south side area of town for the last five years because it's just so beautiful and I know that it's going to come back in those buildings and I think the South Side Cafe is the best thing here, but I'll walk all the way up to Barton for the used bookstore. And I think that maybe people who have lived here all their life know the history of it. I can only glean it from going to the museum and that kind of thing, but I have lived in four different states. And I'm here to tell you, you have a very precious and unusual town that is worth keeping and preserving, both for the beauty of it, I, every morning when I walk to the commuter bus, because I don't work in town, I feel like almost in the mountains. It's so clear and gorgeous. When I walk home, uh, past the Centennial Square and the murals and all of those things. It's just amazing to me what has been done over the years, and I want to be part of it, and this would be the last state I'd like to live in in the last town. And I hope that you will consider how to keep the downtown, how to keep the zoning so that people do not lose value in their homes, and how to not let any more people lose their homes. There may be people paying $1,300 in rent at the apartments, but I wonder how many of those are paying that because they lost their homes. They had to go somewhere. And I think all those are things are huge considerations, and I would hope that you would consider that before you expand and build more houses that are probably not needed and not going to help your environment. Thank you. Is there anyone else at this time would like to speak to the item before us or the, on, on the general oral communications? Seeing no one rise, come to the podium, we'll close oral communications. We'll bring the, uh, the meeting back to the city council. We have a couple of items to decide ourselves, and there's been, and, and I'd like to, uh, if, if, if I don't mind putting Mr., uh, our attorney on the spot, um, what is the difference between declaring what we've heard up to now as part of the public hearing or listening to it, um, if we, if we want everything we've heard up to now, can we make it a part of the public hearing and, and then stop, or do we have to reopen tonight to let anybody that want to want to speak? <laughs> um, well, first of all, whether the comments are officially part of the public hearing or not, you have the discretion to consider them in your deliberations. The difference between comments that are a, part, a legal part of the public hearing and comments that are not a legal part of the public hearing is that if someone wants to sue the city over an action that the city takes, they can only sue based on comments and arguments that are part of the public hearing, officially part of the public hearing. So it is certainly within your discretion to make everything that you've heard so far and every letter that you've received part of the public hearing. That would just be a motion to include everything in the public hearing. You could also reopen the public hearing again and take more comments tonight uh, verbally at the podium. Um, or you could leave uh, everything that was stated at the official public hearing last meeting in the public hearing and then consider the rest, but it could not be used as a basis to sue the city. Thank you. Are there any questions of our, our advisors? I don't have a question, but I would um, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we accept all uh, public testimony that we heard this evening 
and all written testimony that we have received over the past week since our last meeting. I'd like to include that as part of our deliberation and official deliberation for the, for the meeting so far. And, and not open any public hearing further? And not open, just accept everything we've received both verbally and written up and through today. Okay, thank you. Ms. Barnier? Um, I, I want to clarify the motion. Um, we are going to accept all communications and all the oral communications that exist tonight as part of the public hearing. That's correct. Okay, thank you. I'll second that. Another thing I'd like to clarify before you vote, if I could. Um, th with regards to the issue of needing to reopen the public hearing, it, it is not necessary because for all intents and purposes, this is the same meeting as you were holding last Tuesday. It's just continued. Um, it was not even necessary to have the oral communication period because the oral communication period last week suffices for that. Um, but we decided to open it up in case people wanted to give further comments for your consideration. Um, so it's an appropriate motion and it stands to be voted on. Thank you. Ask. All right, and no other comments. Let's, let's, uh, let's vote on the motion on the floor. That passes unanimously. The first, uh, the next item that we should consider is the adequacy of the EIR in defining the items uh, in the elements of the general plan that were on the agenda for this meeting last, starting last week. Um, can we have a, 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 st a staff report on that uh, EIR? What, what we're finding. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Richard Dalton with RINCON Consultants. We prepared the environmental impact report. Uh, for the general plan update, just want to give you a, a very brief summary because we've already gone over this ground at the, the previous hearing. Uh, but the uh, EIR is currently in final EIR uh, form. It was circulated for public review and all public comments uh, received on the EIR were responded to uh, in writing as part of the final document and changes were made to the draft version of the document based on the input uh, received. Uh, the EIR concluded that there were four significant unavoidable impacts uh, to agricultural conversion, <coughs> air quality, cultural resources, and traffic. Each of these significant unavoidable impacts would require the adoption of a statement of overriding considerations, which is a statement that uh, acknowledges that there are significant unavoidable environmental impacts, but that there are other considerations that override uh, those adverse effects. I'll be available to answer uh, any questions on this item. Are there any questions from the members of the council? Okay, we were asked to, by, by staff, to determine if consensus, if we feel that the IR was adequate, if we feel that, uh, that, uh, um, um, that we have enough information to proceed, um, but not to approve, is that right? So we would not be approving the, we would not be adopting the, uh, the resolution that you put in the package, is that correct? Right. So this is a, a, a consensus if we, if we want to vote uh, at this time or if we want to discuss it more amongst ourselves. Uh, Ms. Martner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to understand um, why the change and why staff went through the process of um, asking, uh, as I understand, you did ask the Planning Commission to approve it and we have a resolution and now it's coming to the Council. So I want to I understand where did a change happen and why? The Planning Commission was making recommendations to the City Council and after the Planning Commission reviewed the EIR, they took an action to recommend that the City Council would go forth and certify the EIR, uh, adopt the statements of overriding consideration, findings of fact, and the mitigation measures. The um, reason that staff is requesting the Council this evening to approach it a little differently is we have some issues that have been raised regarding the expansion areas 
and regarding the uh, the zoning if there are determinations made by council that are going to affect something that is in the EIR if you have not certified it then we can make that adjustment and then bring it to you to certify sorry um, without spending a lot of time can you be a little more specific as to what are the new issues there are not new issues. There are there are issues regarding the expansion areas and some of the um, the policies, dependent on how the council determines uh, the menu of expansion areas. You have a number of different opportunities to uh, either take the project description as the EIR was studied or the alternatives as they were laid out for you. So if there are some adjustments that the council makes in actually adopting the land use element, then we would want to make sure that everything was internally consistent. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? I'm not sure, Mr. Mayor, but is this the time when, if, if I have a question on a certain area, no, this First is staff. just the EIR. To, okay, thank you. S Ms. Yeah, I, I just need a little bit of clarification also. So if we go through the expansion areas and um, ratify one of them, and it in our policies and our measures, there is different wording, right? Is, is that why we're doing it by consensus because then we would have to go back and change the wording of a policy? There are some policies that may be adjusted depending upon the action that the council takes. If it is actually the project description that is adopted or if it is one of the alternatives. So it, it could tweak some of those policies in the land use element and the circulation element. Oh. So we're, we're trying to give you as much flexibility as possible in adopting those art, uh, elements. Okay, so because uh, one of the, the, I believe it's Ms. French got up and started uh, uh, talking about the policies and about going, expanding you know, into ag land and so on. So that policy would have to be adjusted to account for that's just, this is a for instance, but it's a for, it's a good for instance. Uh, the same with the Miguelito Canyon. If okay. that expansion area does not go forward, then the rural density residential uh, status, that land use designation that's in the policies, that would not go forward because that's specifically for Miguelito Canyon. So, a lot what what is going to come back to you as the final document will depend upon your. Um, decisions. So it, it, there, it, those areas are site specific and, and the wording would... Okay. That's correct and we will adjust those. Got it. Thank you. Is there anyone that would like to propose an action? No other questions? I would... Okay. I'll, I'll, I'd like to move that, that we get past this step that we take whatever actions necessary to determine that that the uh, the EIR and the data that we uh, that we have uh, uh, adequately define the project and the impacts, uh, so so that so that we can move on. But I'd like some help with the the motion. If <laughs> sure, I think that's an adequate motion uh, for a tentative approval of the EIR, the statement of overriding considerations the findings in fact and the mitigation and monitoring program subject to changes that are necessary due to any further decisions that you make on the rest of the agenda item tonight or in any <coughs> further continued meetings. So there will be, this, this EIR will come back for a final approval at a later date, continued meeting. That's, that is my motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was pronounced very eloquently, so I'll second it. Motion and a second. Does anyone like to discuss, uh, d discuss or comment on the motion on the floor? Well, seeing none, let's cast our vote. Mm -hmm. If we move on, the four items that were 
specifically mentioned for uh, uh, for expansion of the city. I believe the first one. Uh, let me let you give them to me so that we can take them in order. First one was to the west. What was this, what was B and C and D? It's expansion area A would be the Bailey Avenue. We're putting up the map right now. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I would like to make a suggestion. Do you have a slide that actually shows our options? Yes. Oh, thank you. Hey, that's spoke to the, the next, next one. This is the first one. I, I just, I just for my notes because I don't want to go through 780 pages and try to find what was B, C, and D. Just briefly. Okay. You got, you got them. Then you have the riverbed, then Nicolito, then the Y. Okay, thank you. Okay. Don, can you give us your, your uh, report on this one summary uh, again? Uh, just very briefly, uh, the possible actions before you in regard to the Bailey Avenue specific plan expansion area uh, are shown on this slide. Uh, the first is the project evaluated in the EIR, which uh, would provide for a maximum of uh, 2,718 dwelling units, 228,700 square feet of commercial, 22 acres of park area, and 37 acres of open space as part of a specific plan over a subsequent uh, time period. Hmm? Alternative one is to move the urban limit line to the city limit, uh, indicating no interest in future development. This is one of the no project scenarios. The second no project scenario is the no project existing zoning alternative, that's alternative two, which would retain this area with its existing uh, zoning, of lo uh, which would allow for low and very low density resi uh, residential. Alternative three, uh, the high growth alternative would be the same as the EIR project. Alternative four, the moderate growth, would remove this uh, area from consideration, although it, that alternative would consider other uh, expansion areas. For the purposes of this one, it would be the same as alternative one. Alternative five would remove the proposed expansion area from consideration, uh, retaining the uh, existing general plan designation, the same as alternative two. Uh, the planning commission's recommendation is shown in blue, which was alternative one. The city council follows that recommendation. The urban limit line would be moved to correspond with the existing city limit line. Uh, and no development would be considered in this area within the life of the 2030 general plan. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Are there any questions uh, of the members of the council? Okay. We've heard a lot. We've read a lot. The, uh, the significance of this is, is, is pretty darn great. So. I'd, I'd like to invite the council members before we ask for a motion just to to um, give thoughts and views um, um, let, let you know let's 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 talk to each other let's let's truly deliberate the issue, issue before us tonight um, is there anyone that'd like to speak first well I just had a question when was the uh, urban limit line set at the uh, at um, out on the west side was it 19 Somebody told me 97. 1997, yeah. general plan. And the 97 general plan. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mr. Durham. Well, Mr. Mayor, I don't have a problem with the Planning Commission's conclusion here where the uh, city limit line. Um, I, I am concerned, like many, with both east and west, um, but we're talking about Bailey at this point. Um, it is prime ag line or land. Um, it's constantly being used. Um, I know <coughs> it would be nice to be able to annex into the city and actually, you know, build homes there. Um, but with the economy the way it is. Again, we may be able to build them, but I don't know that we're going to be able to fill them. And, and I, I, I understand, um, I'm sorry, I apologize to the developer, um, David. Um, yeah, I have no doubt that they're, they're filled at this time, but like so many people that live in Lompoc, you don't have to go too far to find an empty home. Um, 
and that we've talked about here on council several times because of code enforcement. So I don't have a problem moving the uh, existing city urban line to Bailey, but um, I, I suggest that we stay with the uh, Planning Commission's recommendations. Okay, thank you. Ms. Barner. Um, um, Council Member Lingo has his slide on first, so I will. Mr. Mayor, before I discuss it, I just, I, I do have a question for Mr. Dalton and possibly the city attorney before I do anything. Mr. Dalton made a comment that if we vote to go along with the Planning Commission's recommendation, we will pretty much close discussion for future development over the next 20 years, the life of this general plan. Is that pretty much what you were said? No, that, that would be the expectation set by moving the urban limit line. There can always be amendments over the life of the general plan and it could come, come back at some point and be considered, but the expectation that would be conveyed uh, on the land use map and in the general plan would, that, would be that that area is no longer being considered for urban use. Okay, because um, in reading the general guidelines, of the gen or general plan guidelines, there's a comment in there that says, uh, general plan, uh, the most common sort of revision to a general plan is to amend, is an amendment associated with the privately initiated development project. So in my interpretation of that in the guidelines is that at any time during the next 20 years or so, someone can come forward, the property owner, and make a presentation and we could reopen it up at any time during the next 20 years. So it really isn't taking it out of consideration for the life of this general plan. I, I think that's a, that's a fair interpretation. Yes, it, it could always uh, come back and be considered uh, again, but, it, but I would urge you to consider the expectation that's being set by, by the land use, which, which conveys the city's expectation for the future use of that land. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, with that, You know, I ran for city council a year and a half ago, two years ago, and one of the reasons, or one of the comments that I made was that I love this valley, and I love the way we are a rural community. We are an, let's face it, we are an ag community here. I mean, there's no way of getting around it. I believe one of the candidates for city council during a forum the other day said he loves the smell of rotting cabbage. Yeah, I mean, it's... It was broccoli. Um, broccoli, okay. <laughs> um, you know what? That was a great comment. It, um, we're, an ag, we're an ag community. We should be damn proud of it, too. Um, we're not downtown Los Angeles, thank goodness. We're not Riverside. We're not Orange County. We're a beautiful little valley here, and... As long as I'm on the city council, I'm going to try to maintain our beautiful little valley, and I'm going to be um, going along with the planning commission and saying no to the annexation. Ms. Barner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I will be very brief. Um, I think there is value in being very brief. Um, I will support uh, alternative number one, and I will support it for all the testimony that we heard in this last few hearings. Uh, the public doesn't want it, not at this time. Um, our, the members of our public are clearly telling us that we have enough housing, that we need to take care of what we have here now today. Uh, this city cannot afford at this time to expand, so I will be voting for alternative number one. Do you want to go? Yeah. Do you want me to go? I'll go. Um, this document is for 20 years into the future, and I think to um, quote unquote Mr. Schuyler, box ourselves in is a mistake. We've talked and talked and talked about economic development. And economic development, I believe, can only happen through growth. And I know that's a dirty word right now here, but that's reality. Nothing stays the same. Moore's department store is gone. 
and we've got some really hard economic times. But to look at it, we don't need housing today is very short-sighted, I believe. There may come a time when we will need housing. And I, I also support private property rights. And I think when people come with a piece of property, and I've had this discussion with other members of the Planning Commission, when I was on Planning Commission, when people come and say, you know, I, I can't make it farming this land and I want to do something else with my land, I think they have a right to choose that. I, I really do. But I'm probably shooting myself in the foot. This is an election year and I could have taken the easy way out. I could have said, oh, okay, this is not the thing to do. But I really believe that this is a document for 20 years and we would be limiting ourselves and I think it shows lack of vision. So I am going to um, vote to keep the urban limit line where it is. Thank you. My friends up here, the general plan now being written is supposed to be a vision of the future. Resources may be limited now Today's needs might be minimal. We must set long range goals based on future needs and then build to them over time. The future unfolds over decades. Take a look at the title, General Plan 2030. Recession and prosperity will cycle. We can't abandon a vision due to temporary hard times. After setting goals, we make small decisions to keep us moving in the right direction. I was extremely, extremely disappointed at the Planning Commission recommendation. It didn't address any of the major issues that I think should be addressed with respect to this. It said we've got an adequate inventory today of houses, therefore we should not plan, not have a vision for 20 years into the future. And I. I've heard most of the people here. We support the Planning Commission. We've got a basket full of for sale signs. We've got, that is cyclical. That is today. It doesn't ad address, it, it is certainly not a vision of the future. The project proposed will annex a, rather, a very narrow strip of land across three quarters of our Western Valley. One quarter of the western boundary is already in the city limits. It has already been developed in, a, in the plan that put a buffer, that put a residential road one quarter of the way across the city to, uh, to, uh, to, to insulate the, the residences from the, uh, from the uh, negative impacts of agriculture. Uh, the buffer that is started on that is a permanent, it's an attractive, it's a visual, and it's a physical barrier to help future, future decision makers resist further movement to the west. In that 270 acres, one third of the property is owned by Mr. Bodger, who came to us and said that he used to grow flowers there, did not require a lot of chemicals. He would not put a crop in because it's immediately adjacent to the Miguelito school and to the, because the wind blows across that school land. He says now that flowers are not being grown in the valley, he can't make any money on his land. He would like to put it to some other use. And in that use, he would like to protect the students at Miguelito school. The... Uh, <laughs> We've got to determine the, the, the project based on, on uh, it's, it's kind of like a scale, putting the, the pluses on one side and the minuses on the other side. The, uh, the project will take 270 acres of, of, of agricultural land. Some of it, uh, Mr. Bodger has said he can't make money off. He would not put, he would not put it into uh, farming because of the, the, the health uh, concerns for Miguelito School. Uh, it will lose some farm jobs if we annex it. It will lose some income to the to the d d farmers uh, uh, from the loss of the uh, of the crops that are grown on the land. And yet, those same farmers 
are saying that they would prefer to develop. They don't mind the loss of the income. The income that's derived from that property does not, uh, uh, does not pay any taxes, does not contribute anything to the city. The jobs are low, are low income. On the plus side of these scales, I can list eight major reasons, far more to mitigate the, the impacts. Good planning dictates a buffer. We've heard the buffer reference several times tonight. But buffer should exist between incompatible uses. There is dust, dirt, there is chemical, there's noise and there's odor that come in from those fields right over the back fence into the, into the uh, residence along Z Street. Um, the buffer is extremely important on the west side of town because the prevailing wind, which we all know in Lompoc blows most of the time, blows across the farmland right into the residences. Uh, I think putting a buffer on, uh, on that land, uh, I can't sit here and, and, and say we should, uh, uh, should any more allow homes and schools next to farms than we would allow homes and, and schools to go in right next to factories with all the noise that pull in. Those are incompatible uses. And the Institute of Local Government, there's committees to recommend buffers from in the, in the, in the uh, uh, that, w that we heard about tonight. And uh, several times we've heard speakers say, we all know the impacts of farmland immediately adjacent to. We would be preserving tens of thousands of acres through the west end of the valley with a permanent visual barrier that can't be breached to help people and decision makers like us in the future tell us that we shouldn't go west. The second reason, and I've already mentioned it as part of the first reason, but I think it's important enough, far more important enough, to, um, to, to be a reason all its own and possibly to mitigate everything just on its own. And that is the health of our students, the health of our residents on the west end of town. There are studies, there has been a state of California study that came to us that said that the school district has a much higher incidence of absentee of, uh, for sickness, of bronchial disease on the west side of town. The school district, uh, the, the hospital room treats far more people from the west side of town for ailments of the lungs and the, and, and the nose. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, Mr. Bodger told us that he won't farm his land because it's immediately adjacent to Megalito School and we have kids that are going there every day that are breathing the dust and dirt drift that blows across the farm property. It is plowed in the springtime and that's when the wing, winds are the strongest. If you were to go down to the one quarter of the land across the west end of town that's already been developed, you'd see a, an attractive buffer of trees that are now getting up to 15 feet. When they get much, when they get much taller, those, those trees and the shrubs in that 200 foot, 200 foot wide buffer area will keep the dust and the noise and the dirt out of the, of the apartments. And that's the area where the new homes are and that's where the homes are being sold. Um, I have a series of old news clippings that did some research that shows major conflicts in Salinas Valley, in Ventura Valley, down in Imperial Valley. Uh, there's, there's one set of, of articles that I, that I have that shows that down in the Oxnard area, some teachers that got lung problems filed a lawsuit against their school because immediately on the other side of the school, there were strawberry fields and there was dust and dirt blowing in there. And it cost the school district plenty and it, and, it, and it really put some conditions on agriculture because some of the land had to be bought up and put into a, uh, into a buffer zone uh, at taxpayers' expense. This buffer can be put in at no expense to the taxpayers and protect the whole western edge of the city. Uh, when the houses on Z Street were built, it was expected that Lompoc would grow west to past Floridale, past Bailey Avenue, past uh, DeWolf Avenue, maybe to the sea. There was no thought of putting a buffer in because there was going to be more development next year, more development the following year. When we stopped the development, 
and we said that we want that to be the west end of town, we created the need for the buffer. And this small annexation will put a buffer in that will preserve health of the kids in, in, in the, uh, uh, and, and all the residents on the west side of town. Um, third reason I have is to keep a promise made. We made a promise to the landowners out there more than 50 years ago. We went to them and we told them, you must pay money to put in a sewer line down Bailey Avenue because we're going to grow. We know we're going to grow. And we're building a new sewer plant and we want to we put that line on in. If we take the money that those owners were forced to spend to put in that sewer line and escalate it by the cost of the cost of living for the last 50 years it has grown to over eight million dollars now i don't know what we would have to pay at uh, i think we would be subjecting it if we said no you can't go out there when the owners want to go out there i think that we would be at uh, likely see a claim and we might be involved in expensive litigation and at worst case, if that litigation directed us to pay the money back, we're voting to put a $700, we would be voting to put a potential $700 uh, bill on every sewer connection in the city. If you own a home and a business, $1,400 this year. Now, how many people is that going to foreclose, require? How many people are struggling to keep, keep their buildings or their businesses, and would that put them out of business? I, we may not even get the claims, but, uh, but it is a potential liability, and it, I think it's important enough to consider it in this decision. Reason four is short term. 14 years, we've all been talking about jobs and the need for jobs. This would produce a couple of hundred high paying construction jobs over the next 14 years. A couple of hundred jobs year round. It's not a small construction project. They would be moving, they would be moving forward with, the, uh, with, with, with one phase and then into the next phase and then into the next phase. Uh, how many of our businesses in town are, 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 would, would have a much better chance of survival if there's 200 families walking around that are currently unemployed, that are working, that have money in their, fa in their pockets? Uh, our, our cries for economic development I, have a very, very shallow ring when we, we won't take an action to create jobs. Um, I, reason five I've listed is an exciting future economic benefit. Uh, voices crying for economic growth are reciting hollow rhetoric when they oppose this project. One report says that the developer, first off, how many of you tonight stood up here and said, we should not build homes that we can't fill? We're not investing anything. There are people out there that are going to be banks or financial institutions that have to believe in the project to put the money up. There are people that are staking their whole reputation, their whole future on a building, ability to sell those homes and I don't believe they'd put them in. No cost to us, but I don't believe they would put them in if they didn't think they could get their money back. But once those things, once those homes are filled, they have said that they want to market up in the snow belt. They want to market to retirees that in upper Minnesota, Wisconsin, New England, wherever, that will come to us with checks, with a monthly check, with income. Those increases in population won't, uh, won't, won't affect our jobs imbalance at all. I can think of only two kinds of people that we can attract to this community and not have to worry about or that, that we might attract to this community and not have to worry about providing jobs for them. You know, the retirees with a regular check and the prisoners that come in here that are gonna be, <laughs> gonna be locked in the, in the federal prison. They don't need the, a, a job. Um, the, the, um, the analysis that was done by the firm of Fletcher and Cross in Santa Maria Last time when it was presented, there were some voices out here that have really put them down. 
claiming that they, 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 they prostituted themselves for a small fee to put together a formula. I've known Mr. Fletcher for years. He was a county supervisor, a long reputation for service to the community. They didn't deserve that. I, I immediately stopped listening to the people that put him down. I don't think your arguments will carry any water with me if you're going to start re resort to that kind of accusation. The, uh, the reputation of the individual, the reputation of the firm is for fairness and honesty and for, uh, and, 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 and for accuracy in their, in their forecasts. And they sure didn't deserve that kind of name calling. But the report that they gave is, is quite exciting. It, it talks about paying the city more than double the cost of services that would be demanded by a new development. We, lo we talk, we talk, it talks about the need uh, for, if, if there's 5,000 people that would come at build out after 15 or more years, that they would create a need for, um, f for six or, uh, or seven new police or fire. This project in taxes alone would pay us more than double that. This project alone would pay us more than fifty thousand dollars because each parcel would uh, per year because each parcel would uh, would uh, come under the the, the uh, parcel tax that we put on to pay for recreation programs like the pool. It would more than double the money to the to the to the city to pay for um, to to pay for services in other areas if it comes to fruition. It would also increase the amount of money being spent at our businesses in the community by more than 10%. And think how many of our small businesses, think how attractive that will be to bring in other businesses. I don't understand why anybody that says they're for economic development is opposed to this project. Reason six, Okay, I, I have five and six as separating the future economic benefits. Uh, the, 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 the proposal that we have is for a, um, for a uh, um, homeowners association paying uh, uh, more than $100 a month into the city coffers to pay for the taxes for the police and fire that would be needed. Um, Again, it's an, it's an assurance that it will be far more than pay its way. There are some other lesser benefits that, that, that I have listed on my notepad here. The project would improve water quality in the West Valley substantially. The project will, we've heard in the, in, in, uh, the studies that we've all heard uh, for, for years is that agriculture takes four times as much water out of the ground than residential uses. The water for the city would be drawn upstream and all of that money that's not, all of that water that's not taken from, from underground uh, would stay in the aquifer. If the parks that are proposed in this project are built like the parks in Santa Maria, sunken 10, 15 feet below ground level and if all the storm water that falls is, is put into those to percolate underground as they do in Santa Maria. It would improve the, the, the basin and the west end of the valley can't be farmed now. The salt water is intruding so much that there are many crops that can't even be grown there with the salt water. It would improve the water quality for the west valley. If we bring in, and, and, and the, the people in this community are I think one of the biggest assets the community has. And if we bring in recent retirees who come to this area to live, and I, and I believe the, that it would, would be an easy sell to bring them here. There are a lot of people that can't go into a Dell Webb unit because their retirement income is not great enough. And those big Dell Webb retirement cities have golf courses, major clubhouses, and rather heavy homeowner fees in addition to a, a higher cost for the, for, the, uh, for the homes. The ones that are proposed here would be at a level uh, uh, just below that for people to come in. They would come here with income, they would be healthy. People are retiring much healthier and much young, uh, younger these days. The community has a great tradition of volunteers and this is another resource for the coaches, for the PTAs, 
or the people that work in the in in, in the uh, valley in bloom that 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 go out as mission docents and and whatever and uh, i with them not having to worry about jobs i think that we'll get a great boon from that i'm i'm excited about the overall project um and 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 the long-term vision we're talking 15 years we're talking 20 years that is a long-term vision for this project for the city of Lompoc, and I think, uh, I think it warrants uh, our, our full consideration. The next step, if we approve this tonight, doesn't mean that we're gonna go in and start building those things. The next step is a specific plan where most of the things that were promised and we talked about tonight would be put in, in, fur, in, in, in writing and guaranteed. And that specific plan will go through hearings and will be approved and there'll be an opportunity if, the, if we ask for too much and the developers don't, uh, the landowners can't, uh, can't develop uh, and, and give us what we want, they can continue to farm. It doesn't tell them they have to do this, but it says if they want to develop, they've got to provide the buffer, they've got to provide the amenities that, that we described, they've got to do it in accordance with a plan we develop. Are we gonna wait until we've got a housing uh, crisis again before we start a plan long range in the future? Some, there's some places on the coast that, that show what happens when that, uh, when that occurs. You know, Tanglewood was put up very, very quickly to provide homes. Uh, Mission Hills was put up quite quickly to provide homes without the parks, without the other things that are, that are needed. Um, the, the people that put the existing development out at, uh, at, at Briar Creek uh, started at a sea breeze. They were asked to provide parkland as part of their development. These people, and when we get into the specific plan, will be asked to provide parkland. But they came to us with more than we asked for and said that they would build the park. If you go out and look at that park, it has a soccer field, it has a baseball, or a, or a softball field, backstop, restrooms, sidewalks, paved, drinking fountain, a big tiny tot area that's a real nice park that was put in more than we asked for. And the, and the people that are proposing this, this property have said that they would like to provide some things to the, to the community as their project develops. And the things that have been mentioned, and they would be specified in the, the, in, in the, uh, in the specific plan so that uh, they're not just shallow processes or promises. They've mentioned putting in a a building similar to the Boys and Girls Club for the Police Activities League. They've mentioned putting in a softball complex, somewhat similar to Hagerman Complex in Santa Maria. They've mentioned somehow helping us to build the West Side, uh, West Side Fire Station, and we've talked about how much we need a new fire station in this town. And with the income that they would provide from their taxes being far more than, than they need, that would help us to find the funds to put 15 new firefighters in a third station. No other plan in the city. Everybody talks about, let's go out and, and, and we need a new fire station. We need to increase the firefighters in this town. Does anyone have a plan where the money would come from? There is a plan here in front of us. Would anybody, would anybody, we've talked about building a PAL building. We've talked about for economic development, we've got to do how to build a Hagerman complex. Does anybody have any plan whatsoever to come up with the money to do that kind of thing other than the one that's before us? This is not a final approval. This says we continue with this to see if it pencils out. This says that we continue to, to, um, to, to work with the developers to put together a specific plan that locks all of these things in and then they have the choice as to whether they want to go forward or not. I don't like the thought of closing the book on it and saying, you know, the, the, the question Mr. Lingle asked, Bob, you asked, what if landowners came before us and asked us to do this? Could we amend the general plan? Hey, the landowners are here and they're asking us to do it. If we approve it tonight, we don't have to amend the general plan. Does that mean that you would amend it if they come forward or is it just a shallow, uh, just a hollow uh, comment that well, if they wanna come forward and ask for it, we'll give it to them. They're asking for it tonight. I, I really believe the long range economic benefits will occur. I believe we'll attack, attract new retail and jobs. 
I believe this is our, our major choice for economic uh, uh, growth in, in the community and for sending a message that we keep our promises when we make them. Yeah, I, I sat, and it took me a long time to write these notes out so that I could put my thoughts down. And when I first started it, it was, it was about nine pages long, and I went back through the word processor and edited it and condensed and condensed and condensed. Got it down to two and a half pages. And I'd spoken on it. But my friends, up here, I'll ask you to reconsider what you said. Please don't turn this down just because we've got an adequate inventory of unsold homes today. This, look at the title of the plan in front of us. 20, the general plan 2030, a vision for the future. Okay, if someone wants to make a motion, they can. Well, Mr. Mayor, it's, it's obvious that you're very passionate about this, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, but Mr. Dalton, I have a question for you. Uh, if I understood Councilman Lingle correctly, if in the future someone does choose to ex bring this back to the table, uh, all they have to do is do so? Uh, well, they would have to then go through a, its own review process at, at, at that point, and the city is limited in the number of amendments it can make to its general plan in any given calendar year. But it's but not a closed deal. Not, not necessarily. It could always come back, but it would have to be re kind of reopened from scratch. Now, and also, Mr. Mayor, I, I heard you say that it won't cost the city a dime, but <laughs> I, um, I, I've never known anything not to cost the city something because just in the year I've been here um, you know I listened to you for about the last 25 30 minutes and I do understand what you're saying but it's just like the EIR I look at this like the EIR it's it's a recommendation it's nothing that we can approve the EIR the F, F the final EIR um, and essentially all it is going to be is a guideline for the future um, just because we don't pass this uh, annexation um, on Bailey tonight doesn't mean that it's, it's, a, it's a done issue. Um, I agree with some of the public statement tonight about uh, we need to work on this interior, and I think we do, and I think we have been, and I think we've been doing a, a pretty decent job uh, trying to make it through this economic problems. Um, it's not a it's not a closed issue. That's that's my that's my concern. I, I I'm not I'm not in I'm just not sold that it's not going to cost us something, and that all these great things are going to happen if we say okay the extension to Bailey will take the ag land and you know Lompoc will be okay. Um, I'm just not sold on that. Thank you, Mr. Durham. Ms. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to make, uh, to make a couple of comments uh, regarding your comment. Um, as far as the studies that were made uh, regarding health issues and uh, the 200 feet uh, buffer sound, um, I did speak with Mr. Dalton and he basically told me that they were inconclusive. Furthermore, the city does not have a policy of the 200 feet um, buffer zone. The county, as I understand, the county does, and we are adopting that. The 200 feet also does not have evidence that will solve the problem. Who says that 200 feet of trees are going to solve the problem? We don't have data that shows that. So I will move on from that. As far as keeping promises from 50 years ago, well, I am sorry. I, today, life is different and the economic situation of this town is very different. And if somebody made a promise 50 years ago, it is not my job to s keep that promise. And for that reason, I don't think that we should be making decisions 20 years out and say, yes, this is, should be an X because a council member or new councils in 20 years from now are gonna be going, wow, they decided that and we have to live with it. So I don't really think, and I go back to what Council Member um, Duran said, if there is a need for it, it will show itself. It will show in the form of elected officials. It will show in the form that we do have a process that can be changed. 
So it will show itself. Why do we have to decide today for something that may happen 15 years from now? I don't want to burden those council members 15 years from now with my decision today. As far as the economic impact, we're talking about 15 years out. 20. Well, 15, 20 years. In the process, where are we going to get the public safety needs? We're going to build a few houses out there, maybe 100. They're going to have to be serviced by the city. There won't be any money to build a fire station. That fire station will be the last thing that gets built, if it gets built at all. So at this point in time, I don't think that you know, there is really any evidence to justify that this is economic development. There is no evidence. No, there is an evidence that we have a health problem and that we need to build a 200 feet barrier to solve the health problem. There is no evidence. So therefore, I would like to make a motion. And my motion would be to uh, basically uh, confirm what the Planning Commission recommended and that is to opt for alternative one. Do we have a motion on the floor? I'll second the motion. And we have a second. Well, I'd like to speak against the motion with a couple of comments, a couple of additional comments. Uh, if we approve this and put it out, and if some of the landowners come before us and ask us to amend the general plan and, and go back, uh, there would be a considerable expense at the, uh, for the landowners at uh, uh, right at the start, wouldn't there? Uh, wouldn't they have to agree to pay for an EIR, for pay for the processing of the general plan amendment, pay, uh, they'd suffer the time? Uh, um. uh, yes, I mean, the, some of the, the work that's been done on the, you know, the current specific plan uh, might be usable, but uh, conditions may have changed as time goes by, and um, I would uh, imagine that would be a considerable expense. And if they come, I'll ask those of you that think it's easy to change, I'll ask you to consider that. Mr. Davidson earlier wanted an okay in 45 days to change a bunch of things that were agreed to on the, on the Grefco plot. Well, Mr. Mayor, yeah. just a second. Uh, how many, I mean, do we have all the landowners here tonight? Why horse around? If they're all here, let's bring them up. We've heard from all of them? Three from every? Four. Yes. No, I'm talking about all the landowners. We're, you know, we, we, I, to give you an, the reason I bring this up is because we had 16 people come to the podium last week. 13 of them were in favor of alternative one. So my, my point is, is why don't we have the entire, if we have four landowners, why aren't they represented so we can, because you keep bringing up that it's going to be an expense. Well, sure, it's going to be an expense. But I still don't see that free dime that we're talking about. Okay. Uh, second point I'll make well, is okay. To say something. To address this one, um, I'll, I'll, I'll out of those 13 people, you might have asked, I, I believe four or five of them didn't even live in Lompoc. Check it out. Uh, the landowners were here. Uh, last week and th they spoke uh, and, and you know my concern is what's going to change uh, yeah the council will change but but what's going to change the feeling will still be the same from um, um, a lot of people that are here that are interested um, and, and I don't I don't see it you know happening I just don't see it happening um, uh, the town wants to stay like it is. It's sort of like Brigadoon, comes alive every 100 years, and, and uh, you know, I, 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 we chose to move, I chose to move here, and I really like it, but it is frustrating because um, when you try to do something to, you say, uh, revitalize Old Town, I worked for 11 years on Friday nights in Old Town, and the property owners down there there were two of them that uh, you know, were interested in what we were doing. The rest of the people that had businesses down there shut their businesses, did not open their stores. We were threatened um, 
with a lawsuit because we were infringing on people's uh, businesses because we had to close the streets. So, um, you know, attitudes have to change. And um, to be more visionary, you know, as I keep using that word, but uh, I, I just, until um, we start thinking, um, I don't want to say globally, but until we start thinking about the future and what could possibly happen, uh, I don't know. I don't have a, a, a magic wand or a, a ball to tell me what's going to happen. Um, you know, I hope we do start um, getting more business here, and, and we're working on that. But we need the whole community to work together on that. And um, I, I just can't see something changing. You're saying, well, it can be changed uh, when the property owners ask. Well, as Mike said, th they are asking, and uh, they're, got, they're getting turned down cold. So, um, you know, I just really can't see it changing at this point in time. But yeah, I, anyway. I, I can't see him coming back to us after if it's turned out this time. But I, I have to address a couple of other comments that were made. Where is the evidence that there is a health problem? State of California, after a number of complaints, did conduct a study in the late 90s. That study, they spent, the, the state appropriated well over a million dollars to send a health, state health team in here. They interviewed the hospital, the emergency rooms, the records. They interviewed the school district, took a list of the schools in the community and recorded the number of days that kids called in sick for health, flu, respiratory ailments, and they documented that the west end of the town has a problem. Secondly, where is evidence that this will work? There's, there's an organization that I truly respect called the Institute for Local Government in Sacramento. That institute is funded by the counties of the state and the cities of the state through their respective uh, League of Cities and, and California's uh, uh, Association of Counties. They put out a thick booklet that said that, that uh, buffers are especially needed when the wind blows across the field. They said that buffers work they said that, um, that development should not occur without buffers, primarily to protect health. And I can get you a copy of that, uh, that document. It's $15 from the Institute of Local Government. There is documented evidence, but we want to close the... And we're not approving it tonight. We're only saying go further and study it and put it in, put it in writing, so put, put the promises in writing. But we want to close the door tonight and approve this one. I, I can't vote for the motion that's on the floor. Mr. Chair, I call for the question. Right. Seeing no other lights lit, let's, uh, let's cast our votes. It's all right. We'll, 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 we'll call it. The, the motion passes three to two. You know. Uh, we've got three more areas to address. Let's take a 10 minute break. Come back. Item B is the east side, the river park. Can you summarize that one for it, Mr. Dalton? Uh, sure thing. As you mentioned, expansion area B is the, uh, the river area. It's approximately 484 acres uh, east of the eastern boundary of the city. Uh, the San Andreas River runs uh, right through it. Uh, it's currently used as open space, including the 45-acre uh, river park, and the proposed use uh, would include expansion of the existing RV campground by 126 full hookup RV campsites. The area is currently located within the city uh, urban limit line. Next slide, please. Uh, the possible actions tonight, uh, the first is the EIR project, and that was the uh, action that was endorsed by the Planning Commission. That would expand the existing RV campground by 126 full hookup campsites. Uh, there's also the no project alternative one, uh, which would move the urban limit line to the city limit and indicate no interest in future development. The other no project alternative, which uh, goes with existing zoning, would retain the area outside city limits, uh, but within the urban limit line. Uh, 
Alternative three and four are both the same as the EIR project with the uh, 126 uh, full hookup campsites. Alternative five would remove the expansion area from consideration, uh, retaining the existing general plan designation. So if the city council follows the planning commission's recommendation, staff would initiate an annexation request uh, with LAFCO. I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. In the same way as last time, are there general comments first before we have a motion? I have a couple questions. Or we have questions first, Ms. Mm -hmm. Ms. Roger. Um, when you say a, um, to expand the RV campground, does that mean we're adding 126? Right, an, an additional 126. Additional 126. Mm -hmm. And and where would that be located on the property? We've already purchased. That we purchased, right? So if you see the area that's indicated in, in dark green, that indicates the uh, city-owned properties. Dark green. And so while there isn't a specific... Uh, okay. I don't see that. Okay. So I'm, I'm here uh, uh, west of the entrance to, to the park area okay. along 246 is where it would, would begin. So it's west of the entrance, yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, that little piece down there. Down here. Yeah, I know. But we we have a piece of property here. I mean, the city, right? We we bought that mm -hmm. property mm -hmm. for that express purpose, right? There. Okay. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm fairly confused regarding this. Uh, area. Um, it is not clear to me how many lots are being affected. Can we be a, lo a little bit more specific? And the second thing is uh, regarding this lot that the city owned. I guess we did purchase it at one point in time in the past for the purpose of development. Um, do we have an economic impact um, report on that? Um, uh, what kind of monies and where the monies are coming from for this development? If the, if the council were to direct us to proceed with an annexation, we would then come back with additional studies for the council's review before it would go to LAFCO. So, so at the time that we purchased the property, we just had an idea and we didn't really look into how we're gonna fund and how are we going to develop a, a park and who is going to operate it and is it coming out of general funds? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Uh, I mean, we, we purchase property, we spend money, then we are talking about some development that we're gonna do on that property. Didn't we allocate monies for this development? Uh, I assume it would go under parks and rec. Um, wh wh what's, is it in the budget, <laughs> in the next whatever many years budget? I, it, it's just very confusing to me to, to see what the sequence of events was and why this happened. So that's question, but I wanna go back to the other question. How many lots are we annexing and who are they? Who, who owns them? The one property that Mr. Dalton indicated that is along 246, there's one property there that uh, is to the west of the entrance to River Park and that is a city-owned property. And everything else we already owned? Up along the river where the park okay. is. Yes. And right now it sits on county line uh, land, but we want to annex that part of it with the addition of this ad additional property, correct? The, the park, you are correct, is okay. in the county at this time. Yep, Mr. Durham. Now I understand that we own the property and we're going to be, this item on the agenda is just for, it goes right up the property line that we already own, correct? There, we're, not, we're not requesting anything further east at all, farmland otherwise. On the existing map, the current urban limit line 
does include a privately owned parcel that is on the east side of the drive. That was in the 1997 uh, urban limit line. And at the beginning of this process, we did have a request from the property owner to have an annexation of that particular piece. The council directed staff to consider that annexation request as a part of the general plan. And that is why it's included in this expansion area. Is that the Mosby property? Yes. That's correct. But nothing further? That's correct. Okay. What is the Mosby property? Mr. Lingle? If we annex this property, I'm assuming we basically, along this, we take control of the expenses of the river for uh, flood control, weed abatement, maintenance of the river, is that correct? The expenses are now ours? All we're asking is that property would currently, is currently in the urban limit line. If the city council directs us to proceed with the annexation, then all of these items would be studied as part of the project that would go forward. We're not asking for any project at this time. We're simply asking for direction that would move us towards an annexation. This is not an annexation request at this point. Just an expansion area. Wait a minute. This is not an annexation request. It is an, a request that the urban limit line be along the boundaries as you see them. And then council would direct us to proceed with an annexation. We would have studies to do. We would then have to bring it back to council for direction to go forward to LAFCO to allow that particular annexation. So there would be a number of public hearings that would still occur. Thank you. Let, oh, go ahead. Andrew. So uh, this is the, sort of the same thing with uh, as the Bailey Avenue, correct? Because there, there, it is in the existing urban limit line that was set in 1997. That's correct. Okay. You know, first, my, my, my general comment, there's about three reasons why I have favored putting that park in the city limits. Uh, it is property that we own. It is property that, unlike any other city property, we have to pay taxes on because it's not in the city. Uh, there is a potential conflict in law enforcement. We pay, we hire a ranger to sit in that park and enforce our rules but it's county area and the jurisdiction for policing is the sheriff. There hasn't been a conflict, but there is a potential. Um, we, I have always said that I don't want to see any development across the river. This would not change the use at all. It will continue to be a park. It'll only just be Lompoc's park and the land that uh, we talked about for expansion of the campground was purchased a number of years ago. We camp, our camp uh, fees, and we bring people into town and the, our camp fees give us enough money to pay for a ranger. Um, Park and Recreation told us that with, uh, with the continued uh, um, pressure on Halama Park and the, and times when it's full that we and, and our our campground has been full most of the time they're convinced that an expanded campground would be full and we would have additional money for our recreation programs in the community uh, I do feel that uh, the park but I do also feel that I've been making a commitment and, and, and promises forever that we would not develop across the river and I um, this is not a development, it's a continuation of a park, except for that one small piece. Uh, we put that in, we agreed to put that in because at the time we were negotiating for purchase, for, for uh, a possible purchase of that land also to add to River Park. And at that time we couldn't reach an agreement on price that was anywhere close to uh, 
what the assessed value was and, and we let it go. And um, I'd like to ask staff if we could pull that piece out, that triangular piece, piece and limit the, our action tonight to just the property that's owned by the city and the property that we know is gonna be a park. Uh, can, can, yes, can we... uh, if that's the consensus of the council, that direct, and you provide us with that direction, we can make that adjustment. Mm, thank you. Do we have any? You had, you did have your light on, Mr. Say, is there something? Correct, Mr. Mayor. But you, you, your last statement answered. That was my concern. Uh, why we, why we were going to incorporate a commercial, general commercial piece of property, into our annexation for the park. So, you answered it for me, so thank you. Okay, and apparently that can be done. Ms. Hi, uh, yeah, just a quick question. Let's say we don't annex or agree to annex or whatever we're doing here if we're not annex. What prevents us from developing the extension of our RV park? And we own the property. What, was there anything that was, would prevent us from do, further developing our RV park? No, we um, could go forward with the development. Okay, so we own the property right now. We could develop the RV park. No matter what we do tonight, we can proceed with that if we so choose. That is and if we have money for it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are there any comments or questions? Is there a motion that someone would like to make? You know, the difficulties that I have with this is, again, you know, th th this council has to stop making decisions without really thinking of the future. I mean, this city right now it has a general fund that can hardly, hardly maintain the parks that we already have here today. And here we're talking about expanding and building a new park. Yes, it may bring revenues to the city, but I like to see the ROI. How long is it gonna take us to get the money out, the money back? We need to institute some basic principles in how we go about buying land, coming out with projects of development without really thinking how much is it going to cost, and when are we going to get our money back, if at all? I, let me ask you a question. Is, 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 is that relevant to the issue before us? We, uh, we've already purchased. We already had the briefings from Park and Rec, how much they're earning. We already made a decision that it was uh, to the benefit of the city, and we already purchased the land. Um, I, it, I, will our action tonight... Um, either way, affect the, the situation where we own the land and we intend to expand on the park into it. Mr. Mayor, I think it will because LAFCO does have the adjacent, uh, uh, what you will, policy. Once you are right next to the property, city property, you can request annexation. If you're not next to city property, you cannot request annexation. This only will allow the next property owners to request annexation, and that means expansion, and that means that we keep on moving east, because once we move the line, the next property owner is, go is going to want to annex, and the next property owner is gonna want to annex, and that's how you start with your urban sprawl. Mr. Durham? Well, a couple of things. I, you know, I agree that it does open up the opportunity for people to request to be annexed into the city, but yet again, it's dependent upon the staff and the council uh, whether or not that occurs. It's it's not a carte blanche. Uh, I see a lot of I see a lot of pros to incorpor in, uh, incorporating the park uh, into the city limits. Um, however, if we're going to build the 126 units or um, full hookup units whether we're in the city or not, um, do we have a figure on the amount of money that we would be losing if we didn't annex it into the city? In other words, the revenue that we would lose? The property tax would go up. The property tax would be the thing that uh, if we do not develop on that property, if we just hold on to it, or if we develop in the county. Well, you, you indicated with Mr. Uh, Mr. Lingle that we're going to develop it. We're going to. We it wouldn't stop us from 
You'll one way or the other, tonight's decision on proceeding with the 126 units. If we proceeded with the 126 units, where would the money from that go? Would it still come to the city or would it go to the county? It would increase the property tax that we would be paying to the, the county. To the county. Uh, is the land on the other side of the river park developable or is it in the floodplain? The area to the west? The area is to the I'm east. I'm sorry, to the east? To the east. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talk that, that, that this would be the nose of the camel under the tent. I, I'm thinking instead of something I remember Definitely. getting chewed out for um, when I was still in grade school, when a number of the parents went to the principal and said, we would really like the girls' uniforms to be a little bit higher that they're wearing them down the, the, the today 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 the, the styles are a little different and one of the nuns said give them an inch and they'll take a mile and i said a mile the girls are only five foot high how could it be a mile <laughs> and i got rightly so chastised for disrespect <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah the knuckles uh, but, but I, I don't really think that, that, that we take this where we're, we're, we're in any way encouraging development beyond that. We, it's, it's our own land, period. It will not change the character of the land in any way, uh, except, that, uh, uh, except that we will own it if we do put some more money into it and put in some campgrounds. If it's not our property, that our property taxes will increase. Uh, to take away some of the revenue that those, those that those uh, properties would uh, that those new campground properties would give us. So, uh, but uh, but I, it's my understanding that that land is is in the the flood zone or floodplain or whatever and would not be easily developable anyway uh, on the other side of the park. Is that correct? We did not study the area to the east, so there were no studies that were done on that particular oh, okay. project. Mr. Lingle. Mr. Mayor, on the previous project we considered, we were talking about having a nice line of delineation that sort of squared off the city. Mr. Campbell, which I don't see him in the audience anymore, but he made a comment, and it is true, we've got this natural barrier, the river here. And so the argument on the previous project, or the previous annexation request, and this one are sort of similar. Uh, we want to, or some people wanted to use that to square off our city and get a nice line of delineation. We've got a natural line here, and yes, the city does pay some property taxes on that. Um, however, we, when we bought that property, we knew we were going to pay property taxes. Just like a uh, farmer that purchases property that's in an agricultural uh, piece of property, they realize that that is ag property, and for all practical purposes, it's going to remain egg. We bought this property over in River Park. It was in the county, and um, we knew it at the time, so maybe we're going to have to suffer the consequences right here. And um, I'm really not in favor of jumping over the river at this point. We have a... Um, <coughs> did, did you want to make that as a motion, or do we have any other... Uh, Ms. Martin, uh, do you have a comment? Yes, I would like to concur with Councilmember Lingle that I don't think we should cross the river. I mean, that is our natural barrier, and at this time, I think uh, it, it behooves us from doing something else. Um, and, 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 and I'd like to add that um, I don't see, at least in the foreseeable future, that we have any monies to, to build an RV extension there. I would love to see it on private, you know, with private investment, if that is what needs to happen. But the city, at this point in time, with the kind of budget shortfalls that we have, it just really doesn't make any sense. I understand. Is that a motion, or? Excuse me, can we get back the slide with the alternatives?
I would like to make the motion that we go with alternative one. I will second the motion. Okay. For the reasons I've already stated, I'll uh, be voting against the motion on, on the floor. Uh, I believe we, we, sh we should go out there. We, we put a park in pretty much to, uh, to fill a void because the, the county didn't put a park into this valley. Uh, go look at what they spend on parks in, uh, in, in Los Olivos. Uh, go look at what they spend on parks at, at Waller Park. Go look at what they spend elsewhere. And they chose not to, they have not put that kind of money in. We put it in to serve the whole valley. Uh, and then it kind of irritates me that we've got to pay property tax to the county. I also think that we should have full jurisdiction of that park. Uh, so I'll be opposed. I'll be voting no on the uh, motion on the floor. Does anyone else like to speak to the motion? Or? Um, I'll, I, I'll be voting against that. I would like rather go with the um, Planning Commission's recommendation uh, for the same reasons. And I was on uh, council when we did, uh, when Mr. Schuyler and uh, Dwayne Homdahl also were on council, when we decided to buy that piece of property and it, it is to develop it and uh, put in 126 more parking spots and I, I don't have the figures, that was quite a while ago, but uh, um, I don't know what RV campgrounds go for now, but 126 spaces uh, would bring in a lot of um, revenue for our um, coffers, which we need when we can get the money to develop it. So I'll be voting against Mr. the motion. Durham. Well, I, I agree with Councilman Roger. However, it's like, you know, you, you had me until you said you were going to build it anyway. So um, I'm ready for the vote. You're what? Ready. Let's, let's see. Okay, wait. What did you mean by that? We're going to build 126 campground sites, whether it's annexed or not. That's correct. When we have the funding. So, right, but then. So I, I, I'm not happy about going across the river either, uh, because well, it is a natural barrier. Uh, well, yeah, it's a barrier. You think of it that way. And here you go again with the box thing, and you're you're putting us all in. Uh, it puts the city in a box. I thought that, well, that's what we wanted straight lines. It seems to. <laughs> no, don't be funny. I'm serious. Well. I, I, let's let's cast our votes. And uh, the uh, the alternative passes three to two. That's strike two for economic development. The next item. Expansion area C is the Miguelito Canyon area. It's approximately 587 acres along the southern boundary of the city. Approximately 165 of acres of that area would be included in the proposed urban limit line. Uh, that's the area that is on uh, the flatter portions of uh, those large parcels uh, that comprise, uh, generally comprise the area. Uh, proposed uses include residential on large parcels, additional addition of the rural density residential designation uh, to the land use element and development standards to be developed for the zoning ordinance. Future development uh, is proposed at a maximum of 25 dwelling units throughout this area. The site is currently located outside the city's urban limit line. Next slide, please. Possible actions tonight. Uh, there's the EIR project, which would allow for that maximum of uh, 25 dwelling units under the rural density residential new designation to be created uh, in the land use element. Uh, the no project alternative, alternative one, was endorsed by the Planning Commission, and that would retain the area outside city limits and the urban limit line, indicating no interest in future development. Uh, alternative two, which is the no project existing zoning alternative, would do the same. Uh, alternative three and four would be the same as the EIR project, and alternative five uh, would remove the proposed expansion area from consideration and retain the existing general plan designation. So if the City Council follows the Planning Commission recommendation, the urban limit line would be moved to correspond with the existing city limit line on the southern side of the city, and no development would be considered in this area within the life of the 2030 general plan. Any questions? Uh, yes, Mr. Dalton. Do you want to explain the little jaggedy line in there? 
And what that little, there's a box in the middle of the whole thing. Speaking of straight lines. Sure, so that jaggedy pur purplish line is that I, I assume you're referring to is this one here, that that's the proposed urban, urban limit line. And because some of these parcels, you can see how, how large the parcels are in, in this area. Uh, but we heard from the community and then uh, also from the council and com planning commission that there really wasn't an interest in moving into the hillside areas. So these just represent the, uh, the flatter portions. So development would potentially be allowed, urban services would be allowed uh, within this line, uh, closer to town and along the roadway. That's basically just indicating that uh, future development would not be envisioned in, in the hillside area. Okay, but on the map there's this little square and there's all kinds of colored lines around the square. They're right in smack dab in the, practically in the middle. See where the C is? Straight up there. That's right What's here. that? That's a, a yeah, that's a, a city well site. It's already currently within, oh, okay. within the city. <laughs> Thank you. So we own that. That belongs to the city. We have a little piece right in the middle Texas, of the whole thing. Okay. Any comments or, or, or questions at this time from members of the council? Um, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I have a, I guess the comment that I have on this, um, uh, we held a joint planning commission and council meeting, I, I believe. I don't know if it was there or if there was a one other point in time during a public hearing where we had a lot of the homeowners, uh, the property owners of this annexation to be against it. Um, and, and I also did hear at that time that at one point in time there were other property owners that were for it, but they never came forward at this time. So the only thing that I can assume right now is that the property owners that came in the last hearing and they don't want it, I don't want to go there. So I am really going to oppose uh, this expansion since I don't think we're wanted in that area. Mr. Lingle. When I look at this, and I think of 25 units up in that area, and I look at what it would cost for the infrastructure for public safety, I just don't see where we're going to be getting back the, uh, the revenue from the 25 units to pay for this. Granted, I hear the argument that we're going to be the first responders in that area anyway if there's a fire. However, um, due to mutual aid, we will be reimbursed for our expenses, most likely. Um, so I'm going to have to agree with Ms. Martiner that, well, number one, we're, we're probably not wanted up there, but more to the fact that I don't see how we could afford to build up there. Um, 25 units of revenue that we're going to get off the property taxes is not going to justify the expense for our public safety. So I'll be voting against this expansion. Ms. Uh, Ms. Martner, I was on council when that happened, and we had, you know, the room was full of people who wanted to be annexed, and then, you know, a few months back, they didn't want to be. So I would tend to go with the don't want to be's right now, and it went, and you know, when the time comes, you know, maybe they would like to be annexed. It's sort of like with Vandenberg Village, you know, we should have done that a long time ago. That's probably going to kill me too, but I think, I think we should have uh, done that when that was being built, but uh, that's water under the bridge. Where is the sphere of influence on that side of town? Uh, it's at the city limit line. I'd, I'd, I'd like you to look at, go back, go back to the other, Go back to the other si slide. I, I know that. Give me that. No. With the map? I, no, the, the one that was just up, back, back, back one. Your statement at the bottom of the slide is that if the City Council follows the Planning Commission recommendation, the urban limit line would be moved to corresponding with the existing city limit line on the southern side of the city. No development would be considered in this area. But that isn't true, is it? Development could be considered by the property owners and it would be approved by the county. 
that is in the county area. All we're saying is that the city would not, and if somebody was to develop up there and the visual impact is on the city, down here, we look at that hillside. We would have we wouldn't have to say the county would be the county planning commission would be the one that would approve. Somebody wanted to put a big garage house, pink house up there. Uh, we would uh, it would be the approval by the county planning commission, and we'd have to look at it from our valley. If there were traffic impacts and somebody wanted to develop up there, the approval would be a planning commission that includes a representative from Carpinteria, a representative from Santa Barbara, a representative from Goleta a representative from Santa Maria, not the city of Lompoc, one, one representative uh, that represents Lompoc and, and Orchid, and we wouldn't have a say. What we're saying is that if there is development up there, I think we, I think we should say we want to have some input, some control over it. We want, if there's development and it impacts the traffic, all of the traffic that would be going up to that development will go through the city of Lompoc, come down I Street, go through the city of Lompoc. But the proposal that, uh, that seems to be most favored is hands off completely the city. Pull down the sphere of influence, pull down, uh, pull down the urban limit line, pull it down and let it, leave it up to the county to, to, to approve up there. And I, I don't agree with that. I, um, uh, it, w what I think is, is, is kind of interesting, and there's, a, and there's a couple things, because someone that lives up there called me and said, what would the advantage be to somebody that lived up there? Well, the people that came before us that, that Ms. Rouget mentioned um, knew what some of the advantages were, and they, and they wanted some of the advantages, and they, and they wanted, one, they wanted to be able to have some say over how they develop and how they're governed. And once again, a county board of supervisors that meets 60 miles away that has only one rep for 100,000 people in this area, where the other four members represent Koyama, Santa Maria, <laughs> uh, Santa Barbara, Goleta, Carpinteria, uh, is not the same as having a, a local city council where all five members live within, almost within stone's throw where they can meet them and talk to them at the markets or, or, or whatever. They were looking for some, some local control when they asked us to consider annexation. If they live up there right now, what is, the, what, what is one of the advantages um, to the city? Uh, right now, if you live up in that valley, you pay property tax, the city's share and the county's share to the county. We have a mutual aid agreement. If police need, are needed, if fire is needed, our fire trucks roll up there, our police trucks roll up there as first, first responders, and yet the property tax dollars that those residents pay goes to the county so that they can improve the fire station out of Koyama, or they can improve the fire, the, 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 the sheriff station down in Goleta. Uh, the, the money would not, not come to us. So uh, I think there's advantages on both parts to it coming within, and there's some significant advantages to the rest of the city to being able to look up there and say, hey, we're the, going to be the final say on any development within our viewshed. If we're going to be looking up on the mountains, we don't want to trust somebody that lives 100 miles away down the coast to, to having a vote as to what goes up there rather than having us do it. Um, so I, I, I favor putting it as a minimum into the, uh, uh, the urban limit line, the sphere of influence. Um, and ultimately to, to, consider, uh, to consider annexation if the people ask for it. But um, I asked Arlene to be able to tell us tonight, if we do put it in there, we're not going to, that doesn't mean we're immediately going to ask for, for annexation. There's a step where they will vote, they will have to approve the annexation before, before we even go forward to LAFCO. We're just saying to them, hey, we want some influence on what goes in up there and uh, we want, uh, uh, if you want to come into the city, these are the kind of conditions that the city would expect. We want, to, uh, w we want a, a design, for instance, so that uh, uh, it's not garish, it doesn't stand out, it blends into the hillside. Uh, uh, other conditions uh, that, that, that we would end up uh, imposing. So uh, I, I don't favor taking hands off. Uh, it will not change it will not change unless the owners up there come to us to say they want it. 
If some of them on one side come to us and say they want it, uh, we, can, we can request to annex only that portion of it in the future. But if we put it in our lines, we're, we're, we're saying these are the conditions in which we'll take you if you want to come forward. And that's all we're saying. And it does, it, but we are saying to the county and to others that we want some, some uh, authority and responsibility over, uh, uh, over what goes up there. Uh, approving the, the impact on roads, approving the the, uh, the impact on view, uh, the improving the impact on flood control or whatever might else uh, be, uh, impacts might be. So I'll, I'll ask you to, to my, my fellow council members to reconsider. This doesn't mean we go forward immediately with an annexation request. It would take a vote of the people up there. It would take a number of them coming in saying, yes, we want it. And we've had and, 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 and we've had both sides speak to us in the past, those that say stay out and those that say uh, is, is we'd like to be, be involved. So um, we're just setting the conditions for the future. And if I've said something uh, wrong there, uh, Mr. Dalton or Lucille, would you, would you correct me? No, okay, so this is not asking. So I'll ask that you, that, that you consider uh, um, I don't understand alternative one and two. The words seem to be exactly the same. Alternative one is retain the area outside city limits and urban limit line. No interest in future development. Alternative two is this. Pardon? They, they are identical in this case, and that's because alternative <coughs> one in the EIR is the no project, no future development alternative. And alternative two is no project, but moving forward with the existing zoning designations and uh, land use designations under the general plan. In this case, they're equivalent. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll stop. Mr. Durham. Well, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I agree with you to an extent because, um, but my, my <laughs> your statement about, well, we want to have some say about what the county does if they, if the county were to come in there I mean, on the hill, we would like to be able to, but wouldn't that, that happen anywhere on the four quadrants of the city? I mean, whether it be on, you know, River Park or Bailey or the Y, I mean, we, none of us know what the county is going to do. Um, of course, they're not in any better shape than we are, but I, I am in favor of it, and the only reason I'm in favor of it is because this annexation here involves, involves the citizens coming back saying yes or no voting on it. Uh, because we've had members from the community that live in and around the area come into council and say yes they're in favor of it and then a month later come in and say no they're against it so uh, i would rather if it's going to come down to a vote let them make their own decision that's where they live mr lingle this is somewhat of a rhetorical question but i'm going to ask it anyway the Last sentence on page 16 where it says no development would be considered in this area within the life of the 2020 general plan. That in fact is not a true statement. Well, it's correct insofar as it would not be considered uh, as a city project uh, to increase development potential. But, 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 but it is true, uh, it is not true to the extent that, uh, sure, as a county project, county has its own review process and project can still come forward correct but in the same in the same light as I proposed with development or project number one um, the owners come forward to the city we could uh, um, consider annexation at that point that is correct okay thank you Mr. Yeah, on an annexation though uh, um, <laughs> The whole area has to, I mean, the city of Lompoc votes on it and also the, uh, the, the area you're considering, correct? And an annexation, right? Both, both parties vote on it. Because when I was in Goleta, we did this many times. Yeah, basically what would have to happen is the property owners would have to come to the city, majority of them, and ask to be annexed. And um, that is not something that the city has the authority to do. We would have to go to the local agency formation commission. The city would make an application on behalf of the property owners. If 25% of the property owners 
protested at a protest hearing, then it would go to a vote. If the number of protests actually went up above 50%, clearly a vote wouldn't pass anyway, so it ends there. The vote and actual protest process would be handled at the LAFCO level. But vote, but the city people would vote on it also, right? Is that what you're saying? No, it's only the affected Just the, area. Yeah. Okay. In Goleta, it seemed to me they did. I think the difference in Goleta was that was an incorporation of the city. Oh. Yeah, so yes, if, if we were incorporating the entire city, all the residents. Mr. Or Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the EIR project um, based on the, the information that, based on the information that the uh, residents in that area would be allowed to vote on what they would like. Do we accept the EIR project? I'm not sure I understand. Is that you don't understand what's the the maximum of 25 dwelling home or units? And, and that would create the bumped out urban limit line and uh, would, uh, I, I assume, uh, if it's the, the council's preference, would, would then allow the property owners to come forward uh, to request an annexation. Correct. Would that include that property then in our sphere of influence? Still wouldn't. Uh, no. What would? That's also part of a, a La the LAFCO's consideration with, with the annexation. You would t take the sphere of influence as well. So what we, you would do as a city action is show that uh, in, through the urban limit line that you intend to serve uh, that area as a future urban area with, with city services. And then there would be the subsequent series of actions uh, by LAFCO uh, that deal with the, the city limit line and the sphere of influence boundary. If the property owners wanted to develop without it being annexed, the approval would not be ours. The authority for the approval of that would be the county rather than the city. Uh, okay, I think I will vote against <coughs> that motion because I want to preserve for the city the authority to, to uh, um, uh, the, the, the authority to approve or, or deny any project up there based on the impact to the city, the view, the traffic, the other things. That, that canyon this, empties that right into this, this our city. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this motion would get you the closest, of the possible alternatives, would get you the closest to that, uh, to what it seems like you're enunciating that, that you're looking for. It's just that there would be another series of actions required through, through LAFCO. So this would be the first step in the city control of the uh, of that area. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering if there's other alternatives. One is to include it in the sphere, yes. so that we. we oh, okay. It's not a sphere. Okay. If I could maybe make it a little bit clear, um, the the approval to include it in the sphere would be done at the same time as the annexation by LAFCO. That would all be in one series of actions by LAFCO. What you, if you adopt the motion uh, that was just made tonight, that would start the process of that happening. If they ask for it. Yes. And if they don't ask for it, if they would much rather have the approval process down south. Then they do not need to begin the annexation then, then, process. Then, then we're not protected for that. The pro yeah, the pro you see where my concern is, Tony? If I, I think I do, but I, I, I'm still confused on the route you're going. Because accepting the EIR project, in essence, is going to get us where I think you want us to go. But it's going to come through, you know, it's going to come through the citizens that live on Miguelito area in that project zone but we're still going to get the outcome that you're looking for with the EIR project. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Correct? That is correct. If you vote no on this motion and it does not pass, then the area cannot be annexed because, I mean, unless the citizens come forward independently 
Uh, but this is extending our urban limit line to the outskirts of that area. And it's the first step towards getting the city, to g towards getting the properties annexed and moving the sphere of influence line out such that those properties can be developed and approved <coughs> by the city and not by the county. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, yes. I guess I'm still somewhat confused here. Um, one of the issues that I have with the annexation is what Council Member Lingo was referring to, uh, the infrastructure and the services that we would have to provide there for 25 homes would be very prohibited. Uh, we would not get that money back on property taxes. Now, we, if we adopt the EIR, uh, we still can vote it down if the property owners come forth and request annexation. That's, That's going to be a question I'm going to refer to staff or to Mr. Dalton, because I'm not, I have to confess, I'm not uh, completely clear on the LAFCO procedures. Because then we would basically, the decision as far as providing the services and the infrastructure will be made by those property owners and not the city. And that's, I have a big issue with that if that's the case. But I'd like to understand if that's the case or not. If the property owner, if a developer came forward with a project for 25 homes yes. within the urban limit line, they would be responsible for the cost of the infrastructure. Okay, so it would be uh, there. Okay, they would have to pay for all, basically all the services, infrastructure services. We would, we would okay. at that time review the project and bring an environmental document to the council the council would look at that project and then direct the staff to go forward to LAFCO for the annexation and the sphere of influence. So there would be a number of public hearings where the, if there was a development proposed there, it would um, come to council for initial approval to go through the LAFCO process. Then there would be public hearings at the Planning Commission level to review the actual pros project, the appearance and the circulation, and uh, there would be a number of steps yet to be accomplished, but the cost would be on the developer. Okay, and that would be for the infrastructure, so really our only burden would be that we have to pay for the public sa safety since we won't be under a, a mutual agreement and get refunded for that. I, I'm just thinking, in, you know, I'm sorry, I'm only thinking about dollars here, okay, and, and economics, okay? So, um, s right? But there, there is the possibility in a project coming forward that the council could have a development agreement to uh, exact some sort of a premium uh, from the developer to assist towards that uh, cost for public safety. Okay, thank you. There is a goal in the general plan that we're being asked to approve that says that before any annexation, there will be an economic study uh, to clearly show the city what the, the costs of the, uh, the, of the annexation will be and whether or not it'll be a plus or minus to the city. And that, uh, that economic uh, survey is uh, uh, it, if we approve the general plan, is required. We Mr. Mayor, uh, sorry, could I, could I ask one more question? <laughs> I, oh, I guess I just wanted clarification in my mind here. Um, uh, really, the, 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 idea, the idea, if I capture what is being commented, is that we would still have some level of control of any development that might occur in that area under the county just by having influence in how it would look like or whatever or how much if we adopt the EIR, correct? No? Okay. No, if, if you choose not to expand the urban limit line to take that property in, then all of the development, if there were one, would go through Santa Barbara County. I understand that part. Okay. So, but the part that we're talking about, if the EIR project with maximum 25 units, if we put it within the urban limit line, 
then we would have control of what gets developed. That, well, Correct. Okay. Well, but if we would have control of what gets developed if it goes through the process and there were a project and an annexation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. All right. We have a motion. Do we, ha we, have, we have a second on that? Did somebody second? Didn't you make a motion? I made a motion. You made a motion. We what was your motion again, dear? It's been such a to approve so much words <laughs> to approve the EIR. Okay, that's for the twenty or dwelling, twenty-five dwell, dwellings. Okay, I'll second it. All right. Motion. Any other discussion or comments? We've got one. We've, we've got one more to go, and that's to the north, Mr. Dalton. At expansion area D is what we're calling the Y residential area. It's an approximately 10-acre site along the northern boundary of the city, at the intersection of Lompoc Casmalia Road, Highway One, uh, and H Street Highway One and Perissima Road. Uh, it's currently undeveloped. Uh, with development contemplated under the low density residential designation at 4.6 dwelling units per acre or a total of 46 dwelling units it's currently located outside the city urban limit line next slide so the possible actions the first one is the eir project which is uh, what was endorsed by the planning commission and that would be the 4.6 dwelling units per acre or a total of 46 uh, total units Alternative one, no project, no development, would be to retain the area outside city limits and the urban limit line, indicating no interest in future development. Again, uh, because it uh, doesn't currently hold city zoning, uh, the no project existing zoning alternative two uh, would be the same, retaining the area outside city limits and the urban limit line. Alternative three, uh, this is the one alternative where we did look at a uh, different possible land use option, and this option would change uh, the designation from residential to allow 120,000 square feet of commercial on the 10-acre parcel. Alternative four would be the same as the EIR project, and alternative five would remove the proposed expansion area from consideration and retain the existing general plan designation. So if you were to proceed along uh, the Planning Commission's recommendation, staff would work with the applicant to present the request for annexation to the City Council and the appropriate environmental review would be completed on any proposal. The application would be presented to LAFCO and would be reviewed by the Planning Commission and City Council at public hearings prior to approval. I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. Any, any um, questions of uh, Mr. Dalton? Seeing none, is there any, is any discussion? Anybody? Mr. Lingle? Well, I'm I'm in favor of uh, the Planning Commission's recommendation for the same reason we just approved the last one. Um, the developer has indicated to us that he, he or they are interested in being annexed. Um, there's a little bit of a difference here, even though we still will be stretching our public safety a little bit, we are already extending ourselves out into that area. We, um, we have annexed the other three corners of that property. We are already obligated for public safety in there, so this is really not a stretch of our public safety. We're, we're, um, we're putting a little bit more emphasis on it, but we still are we're providing it up there anyway. My reason, another reason I want to us to consider this is I do not want a commercial development going in there. I don't think the traffic in that area could bear a, a commercial development in there. If we annex a property, we have control, we will develop what happens up in there. And uh, if it's going to be developed, I'd rather have us control it being residential without commercial. And that's why I'm going to be in favor of the Planning Commission's recommendation. Mr. Bardner. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I will also be in favor of the Planning Commission recommendation, and my reason is really that uh, if there is any place where Lompoc is going to grow, it's going to be to the north. Uh, practically speaking, we don't want to go to the west, we don't want to go to the east, and really, Miguelito Canyon is not going to be developed. It's just way too expensive, and it goes, you know, it, it doesn't have an exit. So if we want to be practical and if we want to talk about future growth, I really see that the only place where Lompoc can go is to the north, and I do like the idea of having, you know, a fairly low density residential there as opposed to a commercial, which was a previous uh, request, an annexation request. So the worse of, or the better of both evils, or however you say it, so I'm going to be uh, supporting the Planning Commission recommendation. Mr. Durham. Well, I, I agree with my fellow council members. Um, north is the way to go. Um, plus, I would like to see eventually the council work on that entrance coming into Lompoc because right now it looks terrible other than the three flags and the nice sign, that center median. Um, you know, you come around that curve, from, you know, from Hancock down to go southbound on Highway 1, and you go, geez. <laughs> so uh, I'm hoping that once we, uh, once we do annex, annex it and we uh, get the developer moving, maybe we can talk Caltrans into working with us on that intersection to make it more attractive coming into our, our town. You've put a roundabout up there. <laughs> <laughs> My turn. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hey. Well, Let, no. it's my turn. Go ahead. Um, I agree. My gosh, we may agree on this one. Um, <laughs> just, yeah, that piece of uh, property out there, when I was uh, working with uh, Lompoc Valley and Bloom, we did talk to Caltrans, and we do have plans to, uh, and they were very cooperative about getting that fixed up. So uh, maybe someday, hopefully in my lifetime, it will look nice out there. Um, we, we have plans for plantings and so on. Um, anyway, I, I, I agree that piece of property um, needs to be annexed to the city, and I think the 46 dwelling units would just about fit it right, and um, I will be voting for whatever motion you want to make in favor. I'd like to, to comment. I was sitting here or there when the owners of the property came to us and asked us to consider annexation. And what they said is that they're their property and they are going to develop it, whether it's with the county or with it's with us, but they would prefer to deal with the county, the city of, La, of, of Lompoc. We are right down the street. Um, and I would much prefer for the same reason I said on the other one, that, that, we, uh, that we have the uh, uh, the control to deal with them to put something in that's right on our, our uh, northern edge. So, um, you know, I favor the proposal. Um, Mr. Lingle? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make one more comment and then I will uh, make a motion. The other reason I'm in favor of the uh, Planning Commission's recommendation is for many of the reasons we discussed early on the earlier project, this is not ag land. I think they have trouble growing weeds out there. The owner of the property mows it every six months with a lawnmower. So there's nothing that grows out there. Yeah. Um, so with that, I'd like to make a motion that we accept Planning Commission's recommendation of the EIR project. I second that motion. Any other comments? No lines slits. Let's cast our vote. And that passes unanimously. Uh, that, that completes the actions that we were pretty sure we were going to take tonight. We have, um, we have to extend, uh, uh, extend the public hearing or for the remainder of the, uh, the three general plan elements, the, the goals, the circulation, I forget what the other one, uh, are, housing. uh, and the housing elements and, uh, um, I'd like to continue the public hearing, but have it as a part of our next council meeting. It's a week from, t week from tomorrow night is our next council meeting and put it on the agenda to continue it 
uh, that night. And we'll, uh, I don't know whether staff will be ready to talk to us about the impact of all of those letters and, and, and uh, how many of them are impacted actually by our, our uh, approval of their, or our consideration of land use. Uh, but I have hopes that we'll be able to get to that and maybe we'll let the, the public know that, uh, that all of those people that submitted their applications should pay attention to the land use discussion and not to the zoning discussion uh, if they want to be truly represented for their, for their property. Mr. Mayor. Um, could I make a comment? Um, I, I had requested, I made a request to the city administrator to provide a memo and going through the pile of uh, property owners, um, you know, request for not being down zoned. Uh, my request was that uh, can we cross check and to make sure that actually those property owners are being affected and not being affected. So I. I made that request, and I want to make sure that it comes to council at the time when we're making this decision. Uh, council and uh, Mr. Mayor, I've been advised by planning staff that they are working on this uh, document, and council should be provided the document prior to the meeting on the 21st. Is that correct, staff? It's our intention to have it to you before the, May, the September Thank 21st you. meeting. All right. We've come to the end of the things that we wanted to accomplish tonight. And there's no reason to sit here any longer. So that this, uh, let's call this meeting adjourned. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, it's adjourned. Oh. I, no problem. I've... I think we can still have some moral community, but I would like to make a council request. I don't think that's still on the agenda. Okay. So, do we, we, we do have oral communication scheduled on, on the agenda again. Yeah. Okay. Before, uh, before council requests, so. Okay. Uh, is there anyone who would like to speak at this time? You're going to have to come up. And we do intend to make that a portion of Thank you. Would you state your name? Oh, my name is Peter Quinn. Thank you. Uh, owners with my wife of the property, but also romance with the park in it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the reason it doesn't go anything is because the well that provided the water was lost to Caltrans 30 years ago. Caltrans did it again. We'll put something that's, that's in harmony with it. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Now we'll bring it back to uh, Will's Council. Will's getting, Will's getting up. Talking. Sorry, Will, didn't see you in line there. No, sorry. Uh, Rares and escape, Council members. I would like to thank this council, the former council, and all the staff that put the time into the Bailey Avenue Pacific plan. I think it was, uh, you know, a lot of research and study done, and, and tonight it seems like it's kind of lost, but not, maybe not really. Uh, some food for thought, though. Uh, during my term, I had an individual come in town, he wanted to buy approximately 20 acres within the city to, uh, to build a nice home on and have some land. And of course, I t had no place for him to go. But it did say to me that there might be a need for that sometime. Another one is a gentleman that restores uh, antique stagecoaches, and he has two teams of horses. And he wanted to come in the Lompoc area and buy some property in Lompoc to uh, put a big barn in to restore these coaches in with a work crew of, of uh, about 10 people, and also ra enough area to farm and raise feed for the horses. And I always thought number nine canyon which is your Magaliter project, might be a, an area for that. But uh, both of these cases, we have nothing for them. So, you know, this plan's supposed to provide for everybody. It's a little short there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schuyler. Is there anyone else that wants to speak this time? 
We'll close the, the public comment period and uh, bring it back to council if there are council comments. Mr. Lingle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, earlier this evening, we heard from Mr. Davidson that the, the Grefco property, the development out there, is pretty much dead. I realize that it, it's going to be difficult to get anything through in 30, 45, 90 days. But the comment that Mr. Davidson made is this city and this council needs to start being creative and thinking outside the box. And I, bl I believe we do. I would like to at least extend an invitation to Mr. Davidson and his potential buyer to come before the council as soon as possible, uh, preferably at the next council meeting next Tuesday, and at least give us an idea of what they have in mind for this project. I see this project, this um, land remaining vacant for the next unforeseeable future. And this is a, uh, an entrance to our city. So I'd like to uh, at least give them five minutes, 10 minutes of our time to tell, let us know what they have and plan, plans for this if, if in fact the development does go forward. And with that, I'll need a second. Mr. Mayor. Um, I will second um, that request, and I would like to add that really, um, you know, we talk a lot about what the consequences of decisions that we made when we approved the Santa Rita Hills with all the improvements that we require for that project. It was a long process. At the end of the day, nothing happened. And we find ourselves constantly approving projects and then nothing happening. Um, and I understand that it would have to go back to the Planning Commission and start all over again. I really would like to request of the staff if they can look for an alternative that this can be turned around faster and not start at square one again. So I would make that request of the staff to look at it along with, you know, I mean, we can hear all we want about the project, but if we're just going to toss it aside, then don't even bother. So we have to put some meat behind it, and I really would like the planning department to uh, research and see what can we do along with it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Durham. Boy, first getting out of here all early. Anyway, um, you know, I, I agree with Mr. Lingle. Um, I would like, I'm interested in what Mr. Davison and the possible uh, business person has in mind. However, um, I don't agree with uh, Councilman Martner because I, I don't, I hope that our staff has already done their best to streamline the process legally that they can do. Um, you know, I don't want I don't want to tell them that well, okay, we want this to go through, so go ahead and just stamp it. Um, if if there are requirements and and procedures that they have to follow in order for us to have this, and it doesn't fall within the guidelines of the developer or the buyer, well, God's just saying it's not time. So I, I just don't want to see um, I, I just don't want to see our staff put in a position where we're asking them to go outside that box. I, I, that's all. I'm going to ask Mr. Lingle if what you want then is just for this project or would anybody, if they've got a project, what's to keep the people at the Y from saying, I want to bypass the Planning Commission, I want to bypass the uh, uh, oh, the City Council, I want to go give a, a oral presentation, and if there's no. public, uh, if, there's, if, if there's comments from the Council that seem to approve it, then I'll wave that in front of the, the, the staff and the Planning Commission to make sure that they don't uh, uh, impose any conditions that, uh, that the Council already approves. I think we're getting, I, th I think we ought to look at the process that should be applied first before we hear it. I, I, I don't think we can hear a briefing mm -hmm. from the developer without asking comments or giving indications to him that we approve parts of it or that we like it or whatever. And, and that certainly uh, undermines the objectivity of the, of the planning staff and the planning commission in looking at it before they come back to us. So, so I'm, I, I'm kind of concerned about, uh, but, about changing the process one time. Well, I'm not saying changing it one time. I'm saying that we have to start thinking outside the box, being creative, because this city 
I don't want to use the word dying or dead because it's not. We still have a very, very beautiful city. It's vibrant in many ways, and it's, it's sleepy in many ways. However, we hear it every single day that we need to start becoming more aggressive in our, our planning and our development. This project, from what I heard briefly so far, is this may be just one phase of the project that's already been approved. This um, developer may come in and just want to develop phase one of the entire project, which we've already had the EIR, it's already been gone through the Planning Commission for this portion of it. What this developer does not want to do is have to put in curb and gutter all the way down 7th Street, um, cutouts on the street, um, landscaping for the entire area. This developer wants to develop the two existing buildings there, wants to put in a transformer to bring some power to it, develop it for commercial development, then, with every intention, when the time is ready, to develop the rest of the project. Very po other than possibly a 55 un uh, room hotel, which, when you stop and think about it, a 55 room hotel, you'd probably have to charge $250 a night. Myself, I'd rather stay down in Santa Barbara at the Bacara and uh, drive up here for some wine tasting than staying in a Ramada Inn down at the um, 7th and Ocean Street. But anyway, okay. we, we may hear that this is just one portion of the already developed plan, and we may be, I hope we can expedite, expedite this. I don't want to see this property lay vacant for the next whether one, two, or three years. If we've got someone that's interested and he's in a time frame or uh, rush for money or t rush for time, let's at least hear him out. Give him 15 minutes of our time. That's what I'm asking. Mr. Mayor, well, I guess Councilmember Rougier has Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I um, agree with um, Councilmember Durham. I, I don't want to set any precedent um, to uh, overlook some of you know our zoning issues and and so on and so forth. I do understand about the gutters and the curbs and and so on and so forth, um, but we just heard a man's you know idea. Uh, you know it's it's there is no plan uh, to my knowledge, no formal plan. This was just that uh, you know this man wants to buy some property. Uh, and he's got some, you know, interesting ideas. I wouldn't mind hearing him, but uh, I agree with uh, Councilmember Durham that uh, I, I don't think we should uh, cut corners because in the long run, um, that will set a precedent and uh, some other business will come in and it may not be the wine business, it may be somebody else and they will expect to uh, get corners cut too because there's a time limit so I think we t need to use a little caution and I would hate to see the project go away but I, I you know I'm agreeable to listening to it but um, you know there, there are some things that need to happen that uh, are part of our zoning ordinance and also part of um, the regulations we have so I think we need to stick with that and move as quickly as we can though I, I do agree with that. Um, Mr. Mayor, I think my statement was misunderstood by the council. I never meant one to say that we were going to rubber stamp a project, nor did I say that we're going to sidestep the process. Uh, what I said is that we need to look for ways to expedite and not have this bundle of four properties with tremendous amount of improvements. It will have to go to the Planning Commission. It will have to go through due process. But we need to, we cannot start at square one and start an EIR in one of those lots. We already did it. So can we take that EIR and put it into this? I mean, I am asking you, I'm not asking you to bend the rules, not to rubber stamp anything. Okay, I am asking you to use your judgment and use already information that you have, that you have worked on and apply it to one of those lots and then move on from there because right now we have four lots that are tied and they have to basically be developed with something that just won't happen and they're gonna sit there forever, empty. I'm hearing uh, that there is a consensus for, for a briefing on the project. So uh, 
let's uh, let's schedule a uh, at, at, uh, at the applicant's convenience. Let's uh, schedule him to give us a briefing on uh, the project he proposes. Any more business? Any more comments from the from the council? We'll seeing none at this time, we will adjourn to our regular meeting a week from tomorrow night. Let's go home.